Midnight. Coming up this week on Kings of the Rings podcast, we are going to bust it wide open through this forbidden door in our version known as the Prohibited Portal, where we brought back someone at least that we seriously totally actually forgot about. Slack is here. Slack, 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 Slack's here. Um, and yes, and Mr. YLP from the Young Lions Respective Podcast, who I'm more excited for, is also here as well. They're going to help us <laughs> break down AEW's Jesus. mega event on Long Island that no one's going to go to because it's Pride Weekend Forbidden indoor so let's without further ado sit back relax and spit on that thing with a little hock tua it's kings of the rings podcast episode number 381 prohibited portal exclusively here on wrestle Attic radio and it starts right now I am going to tell you one thing right now. I have been waiting to do a Hawk Tua on, on this show. Oh, I, oh, bet I ha- all oh, fucking waiting. week. It is the best thing on the internet and the greatest thing after Drake got buried again. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 381, The Prohibited Portal. Essentially a pretty big mega show because we have not one, but two guests here tonight because honestly, we don't know anything about AEW as much as these guys do, uh, including New Japan as well. So we we needed some help. Uh, we, we definitely needed some help. So with us uh, today uh, is the Stephen A. Smith of Wrestle Attic Radio, loud, proud, and he Max. will let you Max. know it. A gaijin like no one's business from the Young Lions Perspective podcast by way of Colorado, Mr. YLP, Zach Rizika. How are you today, sir? Oh, what an intro that was, Ricky. Better than the one you did in the beginning, but mm. we'll let that slide. Uh, it's been a while. It has been a very long time since uh, Wrestle Kingdom, and it was—I think—it was a perfect time to come back and uh, speak a little bit about the New Japan life. Hell yeah! And yeah. Forbidden Door. Holy shit! The card looking good. Yeah, we, we, we're we gonna we're gonna talk about that a lot. It's the first time you've been here since uh, you kicked off the year with us. Uh, so it, it's good to have you back for the first time in about six months. And ladies and gentlemen, it is not. Uh, it's it is not my honor, but it is my duty to welcome back for the first time in 18 months due to just plain absent mindedness by everybody on this show. Uh, the the first ever intern of Kings of the Rings podcast, the first ever person to send us a video message, not once, but twice, which we destroyed him for on the on the following episode. And yet he is still here. Even after working him for almost two months, remember that time as well, and yet he is still here, even after being replaced by an inanimate object, he is still here and being patient after we've denied him for 18 months to be on the show, because we usually have him on once a year, but he is back now, ladies and gentlemen, Slack. How are you, Slack? Honored. (laughs) I'm I'm glad. I suppose. Why? (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) <laughs> I guess I, I guess, guess you're the I guess I, I guess I'm, I guess I just like, your royal <laughs> I might just enjoy the abuse. <laughs> yeah, uh, enjoy the ride. Any attention is attention. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I guess I, I guess, yeah. oh I guess yes, yes, with me as always <laughs> as always. Uh Wister Will Tarashock, how are you? I have nothing for you. Just how are you? I, I, I should have said that to my bullies. <laughs> hey, man, I just like the attention. <laughs> Any attention is good attention. You know, we're pounded. We're friends. <laughs> and don't worry, Slack. We're explaining what Hawk Tua means to you at the post show. <laughs> As if I'm not aware of wait, what Wait, wait. I'll, I'll, I'll give you a hint. Ooh, Chavo. <laughs> this is... Yeah, wait, give me that guy. Wait, wait, wait. wait. I'll, I'll, give you, I'll give you another hint. The custody of a child will be determined in a match. I got new sound bites. <laughs> Y'all are this is going street. to be a wild, <laughs> wild episode. Especially because I don't know what Will's sound bites are that he's done. This is going to be a total surprise to everybody. It's it's just oh, those okay, two. okay. If I, have, if I have a few more, if I have a few more, I'll this <laughs> okay, that's what I'm saying. It's going to be a wild, wild show. So mostly, folks, we are going to go through 
uh, the Forbidden Door and AEW's, uh, I guess, a marquee show at this point for them. But before we do that, we're going to do some little house cleaning real quick, and it involves some merch. Because remember, folks, this is our last episode of Pride Month, and I did want to just reiterate that we do have Pride merch available uh, starting obviously in June, but going to be happening year round. So this great little bullseye Wrestle Attic radio logo with the pride colors surrounding it. Uh, these merchandise items are on sale right now. We're going to keep, we're going to keep adding merch uh, throughout the year, depending on the season. So please uh, look into that because uh, wrestling is for everybody, including everybody in pride and their allies and so on and so forth. Thanks, thanks again for Kay, who unfortunately is not with us again uh, <laughs> to, to design this. Uh, for us, but the Pride merch line will be available uh, year round. On top of that, we have some more new merch because I don't know if you know, Mr. Tarashock, but America's turning older again. Um, and so, and Fourth of July is coming up, so I just we decided, or myself, I decided, uh, along with the uh, the head of product enhancement, aka Hope, aka K Fabe K Murphy, uh, to start what's known as going to be known as Wrestle Ad Radio Global Series, uh, where we're going to essentially highlight some of the countries where our some of our esteemed fans are from, primarily America. So this <laughs> yeah. Woo! USA, USA, <laughs> USA. So. Yes, they so this logo, obviously, with the American flag and Wrestle Attic Radio logo combined, is on sale right now. You might be able to get it in time for 4th of July. This is another line and design of merchandise that is going to be on sale in perpetuity. We're going to keep adding to uh, this line as we go along. But don't worry, Slack, you are not left out in this because we have the Global Series featuring the Canadian maple leaf of the Canadian flag, uh, just in time, hopefully just in time oh, for Canada Day, which is July 1st, by the way. I was taught that years ago um, as well. So, again, the uh, we're going to have the American flag. We have uh, the Canadian Wrestlatic Radio uh, Global Series merch as well. I know Fretz bought some the other week. Uh, this, again, is going to be another line. It's going to be in perpetuity that you will be able to buy all year round. We're going to add to it with hoodies and all fun stuff, whatever you guys want. Let me know. I've already got the design. We just need to put it on merchandise. The links to all of that are in the description below. So with all of that being said, let's get into not AEW. Let's get into the weirdest and most interesting thing that WWE has done this year. Okay. So Monday, this has been rumored all week, but Monday, WWE and Indiana Sports Corporation revealed that they are having a what it would be like a first of its kind partnership that WWE is doing with a city. So the agreement pretty much is this. They have agreed that WWE is going to bring the Royal Rumble, SummerSlam, a future SummerSlam. So next year's Royal Rumble 2025, a future SummerSlam and a future Roy WrestleMania to the city of Indianapolis. Okay, it is the it is the most unique and the first of its kind deal that I think WWE has ever done with a particular city. Um, and I forgot what the read was on the Hollywood Reporter, but it was something like it's the largest. Uh, it's like a called like a location fee or something. I have to look up the right term. The largest location fee in history. Essentially, what that is is that it's the largest. It's the largest amount of money that a city has shelled out to be like, hey, WWE, come to us. It's essentially their bid, <laughs> is what it is. I wonder how much that bid was. I have no clue, but it was it was enough. enough. For, for, th for three of the big four yeah, in the next, like, three years? Yeah. In potentially the next three years, we don't Damn. know exactly just yet. Let me check the stock price. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so, at some point... We're all going to go to Indianapolis for something. It is going to yeah, we'll be, it's going to be at Lucas Oil Stadium, uh, the home of the Indianapolis Colts. Lucas Oil Stadium has held multiple Final Fours, Super Bowls. The NFL Combine is there. Freaking the Olympic Trials, I believe, are there as well. Not just any Olympic Trials, the freaking swimming Olympic Trials are there. They put an Olympic-sized swimming pool in a stadium, and they're going to do it again <laughs> for L.A. in a couple years. I think we just lost Slack, actually. Um, momentarily, momentarily. And momentarily. Oh, so no. while Slack gets Oh, wait, come back. Oh, no. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so as as Will looks up the stock oh, right, first of all, speak on this. What are your thoughts on this 
What of a kind deal that WWE just did. So, before we get I get into Indy, let me talk about Minnesota for a second. Because basically, Minnesota was handed a gift for the weekend of, you know, the SummerSlam bit. And Indy is an interesting choice. But I'm not mad at it. it I mean, they've held Final Fours, the Combine. Again, the bid must have been insane, but I'm sure the ROI is going to be fantastic for Indy as a whole. More than likely, we'll probably be going to an event at some point, but holy shit, this is big. This is probably bigger than we think. It's a huge deal. I, I think it's a crazy deal. Will, what is the stock price right now? It's at 107. It's up 3% in the past few days. That's not so bad. Take that for what it is. Yeah, that's that's not bad at all. So hold on. I will I will see what the actual thing of the because the Hollywood Reporter reported is seeing it was exclusive, but it was not. Um under the deal, the old so it's not only WrestleMania and SummerSlam, it's a two night WrestleMania and a two night SummerSlam. So we are going to get SummerSlam sometime two after twenty twenty six, because the first two night SummerSlam is in Minnesota. So earliest would be twenty twenty seven. WrestleMania is already two nights, so it could be coming relatively soon. And the only WrestleMania we know of is the one next year in Vegas for 2025. So you can assume that they're not going to get the Rumble and Mania in the same year. Well, obviously not. Yeah, yeah. So it, it, it's a pretty wild thing. Slack, what are your thoughts on this on this ridiculous deal? The only thing I'm thinking of is, like, so... You know how, like, when they go to, like, France or Puerto Rico or even to Toronto, yeah. the crowds are always really hyped because it's like, oh, we, we, like, never get these shows. Like, oh, my God, yeah, get, oh, like, you know, make the most of it. If I'm in a city that's getting three of the big four over the course of three years, I don't think I'm going to be as hyped by the time, like, the third one rolls around. You know what I mean? So it's like, if they get, like, Royal Rumble, WrestleMania, and then SummerSlam, I feel like the SummerSlam crowd is just going to be trash just because i feel like american crowds do take getting wwe as often as they do for granted as it is you're right you know what i mean so the amount of money spent like for it to be like the biggest deal ever and it's like no offense to anybody that's that lives in indianapolis but it's indianapolis you know it's like I've heard good like, things about it, Indianapolis, not the state of Indiana. I've heard, I've ever been to been to. Uh, I'm been just to saying that, we like, drove through it. Well, the, the biggest I know we drove through it. Indianapolis is the Colts, so I understand why. Like, if it's simply to drive in revenue into the city, I fully understand it. Yeah. I just think it's ridiculous to spend like what they call a record amount on, for lack of a better term, just fucking wrestling. You know. Well, it's not just that too. So, according to Hollywood Reporter. Under the partnership, Raw, SmackDown, NXT, WWE live events will emanate from arenas across Indiana, including Indianapolis, Fort Wayne, and Evansville. So, essentially, they're three uh, major cities. Indianapolis being the capital uh, of Indiana. So it's not. So it's not just Rumble, SummerSlam, WrestleMania. It's Raw, SmackDown, NXT, which they kind of already do already. Although NXT might be a bigger deal because there is some rumblings that NXT, once they move to the CW in October, might go on the road. So there's that yeah. as well. So it, it could be it could be a bigger thing. So the actual, so according to Hot Reporter, it said there are no financial details were were disclosed, but sources said the deal involves the largest site fee ever for a WrestleMania and for a Royal Rumble, which makes me believe if I'm reading the in between the lines, they shelled out money separately for all three of these shows. Probably, which is absurd. Oh yeah, but if you really think about it, like say say they put. I don't know, like, I'm just spitballing because I don't actually know how much money. Say it's, say it's like $15 million, like, per show. Sure. Whatever. They make that back in one night at WrestleMania. Correct. In one night. You are absolutely correct. Well, yeah, so that's all a tourism. Like, really this think... is going to make the city of Indianapolis a crazy amount of money. Yeah. But the thing like, that's, that's, just, that's that, just like, It's not, like, it, it's short-term revenue that is going to benefit them in the long term. So it's like... You gotta spend money to make money. You know what I mean? Like, if you want to mm -hmm. win the lottery, you gotta make the money to buy the ticket. Oh, they got. You gotta think though. I think the point Slack might be trying to make is like, like that that money that the city of Indianapolis paid to WWE. That's taxpayer money. Yeah. 
right? So it's just like it's, it's like it's it's it, it, yeah. WWE's making the argument that billionaires make for having um like Las Vegas pay for the Oakland Stadium, mm-hmm. right? And making for the stadiums it doesn't really help. Like yeah, in theory it helps the economy, but in real in reality. They're fucking getting hosed. Yeah, <laughs> taxpayers get taxpayers get hosed. In that <laughs> yeah, but like I mean, I'm interested too because like I need an excuse to go to Indianapolis because the Colts don't do it for me. The Pacers sure as hell don't do it for me. Oh, I, I'll totally go to Indianapolis. I've, I've never had a that, that was my first reaction. Well, I guess I finally have a reason to go to Indianapolis. That's literally my reason as well. <laughs> I was like, there you go. Nine, no, the Indy no. 500. Although I hear tailgating at racing events are great. Um. I mean, I, I, you know what? I would go to a racing event, but I probably wouldn't go like to the biggest one first. <laughs> yeah, like, I, need, I, need, I need some minor league racing events. You warm to up. To. You got to ease yourself into that. Yeah, you need the you need the warm up of it. But I'm excited because like at some point I'll go like the Royal Rumble next year is February first. Uh so it Royal Rumble 2025 is it going to be in February, which is kind of kind of a rare occasion, but. We don't know when SummerSlam is going to be for them. We don't know where it's rest- February 1st. All yeah. right. It's like, it's whatever. Okay. It's in yeah, February. One day. Um, so, yeah. So, we don't know what it's going to be, but I, I'm kind of excited. And I also, this is an excuse to go to Lucas Oil Stadium because honestly, as much as I love wrestling, Will and I both know this. I go for a stadium and the stadium food. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Do I love stadium food? The food, the food in yeah. Philly was, was excellent. Yeah. It's all around. All around Everywhere good. we went, the food was great. Who was that baseball team that was doing that thing where it was like you pay like a flat rate and then you have like all the hot dogs oh, you can have? Miami, like Miami Marlins. Whatever that was. That yeah, like like, I remember seeing a video. But they were like everything was like room temperature and cold. Because it was it was like grab and go. It was <laughs> <laughs> See, like that's the difference between like you guys and me. Like I refuse to pay stadium prices for food. I I, I, I get refuse. it, but I just I, I it's so good. It's so good. The thing is, the, I don't know. I don't. I've never been to you the states for a show, so you guys can confirm this or whatever. In Toronto, every 500 feet, there is a fucking hot dog cart outside every show. Whether it's a Leafs game, whether it's a wrestling show, whether it's a concert, there is hot dog vendors every like. Do you think you're in New York or something? Feet. What's going on here? So, yes. Yeah, <laughs> We, we, yeah. yeah, we have that too, except it's not just hot dogs. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> that's what it is. It's just not it's just hot dog carts that you can get a sausage and a drink not for like bad. six bucks. And that's what I did before NXT TakeOver in 2019 when I met some friends of the show. But then like an idiot, I didn't eat the move. rest of the night and then just... Yeah, bad drunk. move. Bad move. You pulled... But, fail. Oh, yeah, bad move. Uh, a friend of the show had to actually make sure that I was okay the rest of the night because I couldn't, <laughs> couldn't walk right. <laughs> I'm going to be asking some questions once the show is over. All right. So, yeah. So long. WWE Indianapolis. Will and I will probably not drive there because we did that drive before to Chicago and probably never again. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I could probably afford flight tickets. Yeah. <laughs> flight, although depending how much that costs well we'll, 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 we'll cross see. We'll see. it Game depends on what city. show we want to go to uh, out of these three yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's honestly like yeah it just be mania, i mean mania is kind of be a given but like i want to go back to another rumble yeah the, the rumble is awesome really fun, especially if it's yeah. two nights like if it's if it's two nights i i might go for two nights you know, for summer <laughs> summer <laughs> I'm I'm fine watching so much on the couch. <laughs> How do you guys feel though? Like, well, Rumble, yeah, I'm perfectly fine with that. But a, a two night Rumble, yeah, yeah I'll, I'll probably drop yeah. a grand on that trip. That's but, fine. Yeah, but like a two night Rumble card would be so over bloated by like the second night. Like it would just be like throwaway matches you could see on Raw. Like <sighs> Fuck, my whole point. thing with like the Royal Rumble is I would be content with a Royal Rumble where it's you open with one of them, you do whichever World Championship match in the middle and then just like a three match card give each rumble an hour give the championship title half an hour and i'd be very okay with that pretty much what they do right now well no but they they also add like the last one no he said they, they they do recently they've been doing the championship matches so right the it's like, so no, one, be... no one's going to the royal rumble yeah. to see like cody rhodes defend like the world championship against whoever the fuck is in the world championship they're there for the rumble so instead of say a rumble could easily be an hour and a half easily yeah but to make time for everybody else on the card 
they're usually now at least I think the longest one was the one that Gunther was second in when it was like an hour and what five minutes or something. Like an hour and hour and something four like minutes, that, yeah. something like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I think the longest run before that was the Rey Mysterio one. It was sixty-two minutes and something seconds. Right. So my point is, is like if I'm paying the money to go to a Royal Rumble, give me an hour and a half of the Royal Rumble and cut out the U.S. title match with Logan Paul and I Show Speed. You know, no, nah, like, Logan Paul's Logan Paul creates too much revenue. You can't cut him out. Well, that okay. So, like, cut out. I don't actually know who who's the Intercontinental Champion right now. Sammy, Sammy, oh, you know, I think your your Canadian brethren. I actually forgot that Sammy was the Intercontinental Champion for a second. Oh, fuck. But Slack, even even to your point, because you actually do make a good point in Thank terms you. of Rumble. Um, the World Title matches specifically. It's just like because the Rumbles typically set up those matches. Yeah. So why have them? So you like if. if yeah, so if you were, if you like if you were, we all assumed that Bailey, well, a lot of us were assuming Bailey was going to win the women's rumble, mm-hmm. so it wouldn't make sense yep. for Eos Sky to drop yeah. the title. Well, that's what I mean. So why have the match? You're just the putting enough matches right? to fill in the card. However, the mid card, I think that's a good spot for the mid card titles because those can literally switch whenever because they typically don't mean that much. My main like when people talk about like the way the Royal Rumble needs to be laid out, my main piece of like evidence as to why I think championship matches do not need to happen on a Royal Rumble card is because of the 2022 Royal Rumble. Because Roman defends his championship and wins, but then Brock loses his championship and, you know, is screwed out of it and Lashley wins. When that happened, everyone knew that Brock was going to win the Rumble, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So if you have championship matches that have ob- obvious outcomes, it makes the Royal Rumble more predictable. Yeah, it, take, it takes last, away from what, it. Yeah, three, no, you're, you're 100% last right. Last three Rumbles have yeah. been, it's like, before the match even starts, you're like, it's going to be so-and-so. Because everyone knew Cody was going to go back-to-back. That and wasn't a guarantee. There was no way Edge wasn't going to win his first Rumble back, his first like full-year Rumble back, you know what I mean? Oh, I thought it was totally possible that CM Punk yeah. wins the Rumble. I thought, I that, thought was that was 100% possible. possible. As well. Can I be honest? It was on the table, honest, yeah. I completely forgot Punk was in the Rumble this year. I that's fair. Because he hasn't been on TV. That's a fair point. It's like, oh, the shit. Punk's return has been so fucking mid. It's Amazing, been- you mean? Because he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't, he hasn't been there. He's been doing the best <laughs> he, what he can. With, like, he's been dealt a shit hand. He's been, he's, he's done the really Bugs well. Bugs Bunny of wrestling right now. He is there to just fuck with people, and it's yeah. Fantastic. Except it was, except on Friday that's it was wacky. He's a season, Bugs he's Bunny dead. of wrestling. Like, well, yeah. Listen, it's 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 hard. It's <laughs> it's Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels. It plays out. It plays out perfectly. Bret Hart, Shawn Michaels from like ninety six, ninety seven. Talked about this last week. Exactly the mm-hmm. way you want it. Build the tension, folks. But we can talk about that all day long. What we're here to talk about, folks, is Forbidden Door emanating from Long Island, New York, specifically Elmont, uh, where the UBS Arena is at, going on on Sunday. Uh, currently. Currently, right now, is the time of this recording. Well, you'll be surprised. It's only eight matches so far. Oh, thank God. <laughs> eight matches. <laughs> eight matches so far. This could blow up to, like, 13, 14. <laughs> by, oh, by, by, the right time now, Wednesday, maybe. by the time Wednesday happens, it could blow up to... Double digits is not It could blow good. up to 13, 14. Yeah. Now, like I said, my, myself and Will Tarashock aren't the biggest... No, are the most knowledgeable people for AEW and New Japan and some of CMLL to uh to kind of brush it in. But that's why we have Slack, who kind of loves and hates AEW, and Mr. YLP, who knows more about New Japan than I think anybody else. So we're probably going to defer to you most of the time for your guys' expertise. Uh, so that's how this thing is going to go. And we're going to start with the top of the card, which I will presume will be the main event. The first ever African-American World Heavyweight Champion in AEW history, Swerve Strickland, is putting his title on the line against the AEW International Champion, Will Ospreay, which I guess the international title is the secondary title compared to the TNT title, the Continental Championship, and whatever other championship, the FTW Championship in AEW. So I guess the international title is their intercontinental title. I'm assuming since they're doing this, it's champion versus champion, but the AEW World title is is on the line. Now, I actually kind of know both of these men uh, (laughs) with this. And it is, for me, it's an interesting thing because a lot of Swerve's run, in my opinion, has kind of been sullied by everything else going around AEW, which which is not Swerve's fault at all. 
you know, there are just bigger storylines. Overshadowed, you mean? Yeah, he's, yeah, they're, yeah. It's getting overshadowed. So there's, there's like, there's nothing that Swerve really can do. That's just some storylines just happen to pick up steam. Um, but I don't think, even though Will Osprey is the hot guy right now, and his whole hit row and hit list thing kind of didn't hit for me. No pun intended with that promo. Like I get what he was trying to do, I but I, it. I liked it. It kind of, it just for me, it fell flat. I was like, ah, I get it, but like, I don't know. Um, he's right. He has been Kenny. And Okada. Yeah. You know, and Will Ospreay is kind of that hot guy with a, with a lot of stuff going on right now. But I don't think, in my opinion, I do not think it's time for, for Will Ospreay to be a double champ. I don't think they need double champs in AEW right now. You need to, this, is a bad, this was a bad match to make. They need, they need you need to unify titles at this point. <laughs> but, <laughs> this is a horrible match to make. All these belts make New Japan look Yeah, it, but it's, it's crazy. Still, so, creatively speaking, this is a horrible match to make. Absolutely. I mean, is it is it? No, it's just the right? AEW World Championship just, on the no, line. It's just swerves. Oh, okay. Right. WWE like just did this. Right? <laughs> Didn't WWE just they do this did. with Cody and AJ? <laughs> yep. They almost. Did. Okay, no, Cody yes. and Logan. Yeah, yeah. Cody, Cody and Logan. Logan. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They did. So- the thing is, is that there is no good outcome here because if Swerve wins clean, then Osprey loses momentum. If Osprey wins clean, then Swerve winning the championships means but all. But then if either one is dirty, then it's just you don't want a dirty finish for a main event, you know what I mean? Yeah. And like a lot of the AEW purists have been saying, like, oh, but like it's just about the wrestling. Like, even if what Osprey loses, like it's not gonna matter. Like, we're just doing it for the rest. But it doesn't per- Yeah, I was I was gonna say, but isn't it, like the, the point the problem of is, AEW? The problem is with AEW is that they start new storylines before finishing the ones that they're currently fucking on. Because they are the starting banks. the MJF Osprey feud while Osprey is feuding with fucking Swerve. So it, it makes it even more obvious what's gonna happen. But what people are saying is like, oh, it's like, well, MJF wants the world title back. So what if Osprey win Osprey's not gonna fucking win. Osprey is my favorite wrestler in the world. He's not going to fucking win. There's no way. Whether it's MJF screwing him and MJF turns heel, which won't happen. Whether it's Swerve winning clean. There is no good outcome here for anybody involved in this match. It only To me, it diminishes Swerve's stock. Mm, fair. Mr. Wild P, what are your because, thoughts? I, yeah, I'll shut up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I mean, I'll stop. I'll I'll stop. Like, I'll when I was doing my prediction. No, you're good. <laughs> no, you're good. You're good. You're good. Now, like, when I was, like, writing down my predictions, like, because I was bored at work and I didn't care. What um, happens? Um, the only thing that came to my mind, it'd be like that sometimes. But the only thing that came to my mind strictly was Swerve wins clean. Yeah. It's going to be a hell of a match. Let's not get that twisted by any way, shape, or form. This is going to be a hell of a match. But why would you take the title of Swerve right now when everybody's going to be talking about freaking all in and what they're going to do there. And if they're going to have to drop the title sort of drop the title, then I mean, it's not the time one and Osprey's got a belt. We're good. Yeah. Swerve retains. Swerve retains. It's going to be a hell of a match though. Yeah. It's going to be fun. I, this is almost worth me spending money to go to this, to go to UBS even because I like UBS number one. Um, mm-hmm. But this is almost, this is almost like is the price of admission for me to go to this AEW event. I'm not going, but I'm, I'm just not going. Ren is due the next day, so I'm not going. Um, but <laughs> but, <laughs> but, if I, but if I, I was, I would go to see this. But Will Terrence, like, what is your final prediction for this? Swerve wins? Yeah, I'm also going to take Swerve, but I thought the whole point of this pay-per-view was that it's like an all-star game, and what would happen if these two faced off, yep. right? So it's kind of like, well, yeah. who cares who wins? They're all on the same the team. <laughs> it's, I, I, I guess, but I mean, if, if it's if it's for the team. actual title, I don't see Will Ospreay taking his belt. Not yeah, a chance. Yeah, no, it, it would it would be weird. Mm-hmm. It would be. It... I mean, this guy loses all the time, and people still love him. <laughs> so, it's, it him oh, losing right. does, in my opinion, this doesn't matter because he's already known as one of the greatest wrestlers yeah. in the world. So. Yeah. It, yeah. AEW is a company where wins and losses don't really matter. <laughs> they're like, well, they're like, whose line is it anyway? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> pretty much matter. it is. It's entertaining. It's a lot of fun. But what happens That's doesn't really matter. That's a great way to put it, though. What, That's a great way to put it. What though. I, don't I love watching is that <laughs> the fact that they're making this swerve, and this is like my my main gripe with the match, because like um, YLP said, 
it's going to be a fucking incredible match. Like, don't get me wrong. I'm very excited to see this match happen. But it also feels like AEW is leaving a lot of New Japan talent on the shelf. You don't just, say. And not, and not using them. Like, could you imagine? You don't like, say. Like, imagine, like, I don't know if you would think this would sound. To me, because of the way this dude wrestles, I think this could be really tight. And he might be injured for all I know. Give me Will Ospreay versus Jeff Cobb. I... I'd I'd watch that. I'd watch that in a heartbeat. For sure. Because it's a good choice. It's a good choice. And then <laughs> um just for me, because I like this wrestler a lot, and again, I don't know if he's injured or not. Swerve versus Kushida. I would I think that would be a really good match. Swerve, re- Swerve can wrestle technical yeah. when he needs to. And Kushida can break your arm in a in a flash. Right? So I think that to just do Swerve Osprey for the sake of doing Swerve Osprey is stupid on and on the only card that you should not be doing that match on is for Ben Nor and guess what they're fucking doing it. Yeah, because Will Osprey is signed to AEW, Correct. right? Fully. Fully. So yeah, what, what is 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 he at least on like Collision or the other show? So it's like ooh Raw versus SmackDown. The thing no. is that Osprey open. needs to be more. <laughs> no, they're, on, they're both I on. I think Dynamite. so. God fucking damn it! Yeah. God fucking damn it! Yeah. Yeah, he wrestled on Collision last week. Never mind, he wrestled on Collision last week, but I think he also cut a promo on Dynamite on Swerve. He did. Okay, so this isn't a Forbidden Door match, then. It's this just is just a match. match. This is just like... This is, this this is, is just your main event of AEW match. It's Winter is Coming later. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, for real. Like... <laughs> This has nothing. This has nothing the to do with it. Like, why, why isn't New Japan guy in the main event? And at your pay per view about sharing the spotlight with another. I'm just company. saying, going because yep. I went to last year's for Bindor in Toronto. Yeah. Going from Kenny Omega versus Will Ospreay and Okada versus Danielson to Orange Cassidy versus Zack Saber Jr. and Swerve versus Osprey, I think is one of the biggest downgrades I've ever freaking seen in my life. <laughs> like, yeah, I think the latter match, 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 match is really the good. only match oh, where I'm damn. like, no, wow. Don't get me wrong. Zack Saber Jr. and Orange Cassidy are both great, but it's well, when we get to it, I have I have a lot of feelings about Orange Cassidy. That's fine. Right. That's fine. I've seen so Orange we'll Cassidy. That's right. I've met ZSJ. ZSJ, nice guy in person. We saw him at Evolve that one time. Well, yeah. I have a lot. I have a lot of. Yeah, I have a lot of Cash, feelings Cash, the about this company. Man. A lot of feelings. Listen, we're all about feelings here. So let's move on. Let's move on from these feelings and move on to some feelings that Mr. YLP might actually enjoy. Ladies and gentlemen, the IWGP World Heavyweight Championship is on the line with John Moxley putting the title on the line. John Moxley won this in Chicago, by the way, at essentially a house show. Oh, yep. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, by the way, the title changed hands though. The biggest title in New Japan changed hands at a United States house show. Let that sink yes, in. Yes. <laughs> I, I, I take everything. Thank, thank you, Will. Take no issue at all. Absolutely not. <laughs> thank you, Will. Going up against one of the most. No, no, we're perfect. Yeah, going up, going up against one of the most consistent, one of the modern legends of New Japan pro wrestling, Tetsuo, Tetsuo Naito, if I'm saying that correctly, Mr. Wild P, correct me if I'm wrong, um, who I believe won the title at Wrestle Kingdom recently. He did. He did. So, yeah, I... We can talk all about Mox. I think we all have feelings about Mox, but I'm going to... <laughs> I'm going to defer to Mr. YLP. Give me some insight. What do we need to know about Tetsuo Naito? And his shot at, at getting his title back from John Moxley. So basically, let's take our minds back to uh, let me look at my calendar. The ninth, Dominion went down, and there was a wonderful lumberjack death match between John Moxley and Evil. Moxley retains in some some and yeah. There was a push up bar involved. There was a table involved. Barbed wire bat. Yeah, it, it was a fun match. If you haven't seen that yet, go watch that. But after the match, Moxley cuts the promo basically saying anytime, anyone, anywhere. Doesn't matter. He wants to defend the belt. And he basically called, like, said, anybody in the back of New Japan, Forbidden Door, what's up? Out comes Naito. Makes sense. Pretty much put up the rematch. And and in New Japan, they pretty much just, like, people will just come out and just challenge for whatever titles, like, there. It works out when it's necessary. But... Naito's getting his lick back. 
and I'll tell you why. I'm, go- I'm going with Naito to take the title back. G1 Climax is coming up mm-hmm. next month. And I have a very, very good feeling. Oh, wait. There's someone that's in this match that's not in the G1, and his name is John Moxley. Moxley's not in G1. I think he can drop the title and be perfectly fine with it because Naito, as the world heavyweight champion, makes more sense going into G1 than Moxley not being there at all. I'm I'm just going to put it like this, though, in terms of Moxley and Naito. The first match was good, and I want to see it again. Naito gets his lick back and takes the title back to Japan being the world heavyweight champion. Makes sense to me. Slack, I'm assuming that you do not want to see Moxley with this title long for much longer. Ew. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. Um, just for me, when it comes to John Moxley, like I, th- he's he's a good wrestler. He is. Don't don't get me wrong, dude. Dude can go. But for me, as long as he's been in AEW, and if you guys disagree with me, I know a lot of AEW fans disagree with me because I've had this conversation with people. I think John Moxley tries too hard to make you forget that he was Dean Ambrose. Wow. Wow. Oh God. Dude. Oh wow. God. Slack, next time you get That's in That's a argument, Don DeMarco I'll... right there. Holy yeah, Slack, shit. Slack, next time you get in the argument with that with someone, just let them know the entire considering <laughs> staff appro- approves that message, and you are a thousand Don't worry, because... Slack. This is going on our TikTok Ooh. in our because reels really soon. I'm fine with that. I'm fine with that. Right you know what? No, I'm going right now TikTok. Yeah. John Moxley fans, to John Moxley fans, oh boy. you can kiss my ass. You can debate your grandmother, okay? He's been boring as Dean Ambrose, and he's even more boring right now because he's trying too damn hard to be so fucking hardcore. It's boring and it's overdone and it's outplayed and it's outdated and get the title off them. Wow. All right. Slack slack, slack with that, the hot that, slack. That, that, slack stop slack when nice. full heel. Right? It's more he fun when you're wrong. That being, said, that being said, I will say this. John oh, he's gonna, yeah, yeah, yeah. John Don't worry, I'll clip it away. I'll clip it away. <laughs> Yeah. Size like continue, continue. For me, John Moxley, like I said, he is trying way too hard to make you forget that he was Dean Ambrose. All I need him to do is dial it back like two notches, and we're good. But the fact that every ma- every John Moxley match ends up becoming a death match at some fucking point, and it's just <laughs> boring. It's boring at this point. He just wants to bleed. Like, he wants there, to bleed more than Cody in AEW. There is nothing about a John Moxley True. versus Tetsuya Naito match that makes me think, oh, Moxley's probably going to bleed, but he's going to fucking bleed. Like, he, like he, the thing is, is that John Moxley is so addicted to blading that Naito will hit the Destin Dino, which lands Moxley on the back of his head, and Moxley will still figure out a way to make that a blade. On his forehead. 100%. 100%. 100%. That said, Naito, I think, is one of, is still one of the most underrated wrestlers in the world. Agreed. Because when it, mm-hmm. when it comes to, to because him. when it comes to New Japan's exposure in the Western wrestling world, it's a very limited list. Mm-hmm. And like and you guys bringing uh YLP and myself here sort of rings that true. Because there are guys on this card that there are guys on this card that I'm like, "Oh my god, like I can't believe he's actually on this card." Whereas Nine the other wrestling fans are gonna be like, Who the fuck is this? And excuse excuse like I've literally seen this. Who is this random Japanese guy? Sounds about and right. It sounds like the IWC. So, like I, I at last year's Forbidden Door, um the I and I'm not making my point strong here, it's just been a long day and YLP could help me out with this. Um who was Punk's match against at Forbidden Door last year? Oh, I don't even fucking remember. I forgot Punk was at Forbidden Door last year. I want to say Tanahashi. I want to say it's Tanahashi. A, was it Ishii? It was the guy that does the clothes. That would have actually been bad. Nah, Ishii would have whooped his ass. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I don't know. But the point actually. is that like, I went into that. <laughs> I'll look it up and confirm it. But when I went into that match, I was like, oh, like, I'm really happy like that this guy is wrestling. Four guys in my section were like, who the fuck is this random? And then they said uh, something that I will not repeat. And it's just, and and this was what frustrates me even more about Osprey Swerve main event thing is that this is such a really good opportunity to display the amount of talent in New Japan. Mm. 
and they're just not taking the opportunity. Yeah, by the way, CM Punk went, ag- went up against uh, Satoshi Kojima. Fucking Kojima. Yeah. Yeah, and in the corner, he was going, oh, I, don't know, I don't know who that is. Kojima. I have no oh, idea. Oh, I, 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 um, it was Kojima. It was uh, I think we would love Kojima. Because, they, they, okay, Will, he has a corner spot, and he basically yells in Japanese, I'm coming for you, bastard. <laughs> and then there's, like, pretty much just running, pretty much running elbow into the corner. And then there's, like, the like the 100,000 chop spot. It's nice. fucking great. And then, but, I mean, I, 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 I get that. I get that. Um. But AEW has, I feel like AEW sometimes has an identity crisis. Like, who are yeah. they going for? Yeah. Are they going? Because I, I, they, they like to lean into the IWC a lot, and sometimes it's a bad thing. Too sometimes much. it's not a bad thing. The show on the foot. I mean, but dude, like, I think it's hard. It's hard because the idea of being successful in a niche doesn't come across as always successful. No. Especially when you consistently compare it to WWE, who is very much not no. niche. Um. Well, they are in terms of an entertainment form, or but recent, in the world yeah, of yeah. rest in the in the world of wrestling, they are not niche. In the world of entertainment, they are very niche. So AEW is trying to be niche within a niche, and you gonna But when you do that, downside is you have a lot of people who go, "I have no idea who this yeah. guy is," and a lot of people are gonna be like, "I know exactly who that is." But that number is just so that is small. correct. So with that being said, I feel it's, like it's hard. It's kind of hard to grow into the audience when you focus on that niche so right, heavy. Yeah. I feel like sometimes yeah. AEW has this mindset, like, and again, people people will disagree with me on this, but that, that that's why I'm here for the clips and the controversial opinions. <laughs> AEW, right there. thank you. <laughs> AEW looked at NXT between the Bobby Roode glorious NXT Championship win up to when the pandemic hit, and looked at that time period of NXT and went, "What if we did that, but?" Bigger. With money because there is <laughs> yeah, so that's exactly that's so ex- again much. he is so fucking correct there is so much i see on yes. aw tv that i'm like <laughs> you know what i will make you can make this a clip too if you want to aw is the equivalent of let me copy your homework but change it enough so people don't know i copied you <laughs> <laughs> they looked at NXT and went, "Hey, God. <laughs> and NXT was like, "Yeah, I just change it a little bit." And you want to know what I mean? Oh my Undisputed God! Era? Undisputed Era, Undisputed Kingdom. That's true. Kingdom. <laughs> like, yeah, it's it's so. And again, I I I have con- the reason I say all this here is because I am so sick of the amount of crap that people get. For having opinions that are critical, but also backed up by just fact. Because there are AEW purists that are just like, AEW is great because it's not WWE. But the thing is, is like you can like both and not be a fucking dick about it. Facts. And that's, that's why I hate bar. that's why I I've had a couple people say, like, why am I not tweeting as much? Because I'm fucking sick of it. <laughs> Like, it's just, like, I. there are people that I am friends with, legitimate friends with on Twitter, that when I read their Twitter feed, I am like, I I would rather not, like, I. so many things I'd rather do than read this stupid fucking tweet that sounds like you just tweeted it out of your ass. Like, yes, yeah, like, you don't, you don't need to be a Twitter yeah. warrior. This is a, this is a, this is a yeah, slackination yeah, going on right now. Sorry. I mean, yeah, don't get me that's... wrong. He 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 makes a very valid point. Um, Aggressively, that, yeah. You like you you can make a strong case that AEW does literally try and copy NXT to yeah. a point. But I don't even like I don't even view that as a bad thing because that no, that not. type of wrestling was go mm. was was gone, and because Vince came into NXT and fucking ruined it, and we we as fans still wanted that kind of wrestling because that part of NXT was some of the Absolutely. best wrestling. It's brilliant. Like, you could put that Absolutely. era of wrestling and match it up to any other era in any part of any wrestling company, and it matches. All of a takeover the era. So people, if you, mm-hmm. because, right? Because so so AEW trying to do that, I was like, yes, that, that's yeah. a, that, like that. That's a duh statement to me because why would it, why would you not want to do that? Exactly. The hole in the market was there, and they they did do a good job filling it for, for a little, little while. It just became a lot. But before a lot of people talk about like sorry, just really yeah. quickly. A lot of people talk about AEW signing a lot of ex WWE guys, but it's mostly ex WWE NXT guys. 
They don't yeah. sign a lot of the main roster guys. It's always the guys that signed in NXT through the indies, whether it's Adam Cole, yep. Keith Lee. Like the only, honestly, off the top of my head, the only three guys that I can think of that were actually on WWE's main roster on a weekly basis that are on W that are on AEW's payroll right now is Danielson, Edge, Edge and, and Christian. No, not even Christian. Christian was because like staple of WWE. Was, Christian was he was gone Christian, off. Yeah, Christian was on. Like I'm talking about like the window of time between leaving WWE and signing. Okay. So I, I okay, would say so that injured, the three okay, that fine. are on WWE TV or on AEW TV that were on the main roster right now is Mox, Jericho. Danielson, and Edge. I'm probably missing. What about, Jer- what about Jericho? Okay, fine, Jericho. So there's like Jericho. four. But the point is, is like the the main roster to NXT signings through AEW. The ratio is ridiculous. Yeah, way more. For yeah, one in roster more. guy, it's five Absolutely. NXT guys. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. So that being said, Will, are you going with Nido? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I am. Because, <laughs> dude, I was so ready to go to Moxley. You know, Slack, you're fucking 10 out of 10 over here, my friend. Um, I was ready to go with Moxley, but Slack just ripped him a new asshole. I'm like, dude, fuck this guy. He's not winning ever again. <laughs> it's going to be really. I, was, I mean, I mean, for, you know, all the goofies in, in the IWC, y'all can shut the fuck up. But I will. I always say it like this: when it comes to like guys like Naito and anyone else from New Japan that comes through, you're gonna fucking find out. You're gonna love it, and and plus Naito is just like he is that guy in New Japan. He is their top guy right now. And Tani Tanahashi can say whatever fuck he wants. He thinks he's the ace. No, Naito's the ace right now. You can you can be president, relax. But you're gonna find out exactly who Naito is. On the thirtieth, and it's going to be freaking fantastic. Yeah, yeah. President Ace. Naito was on the freaking pre-show last year, and now he's in the World Heavyweight Championship match on the main card. Yeah, it's makes. incredible. The only the, I'm picking Naito as Going well. To G1 as I'm show. picking Naito as well before we move on, just because. Give New Japan their goddamn world title back. Yes. <laughs> like serious. <laughs> like, <laughs> like wh- what the hell? Just like this is one of the guys like Brock won the world Gato championship where they the actually day. show up. You know what I mean? Like they leave the company they're with they show up somewhere else. Yeah, like giving their world title back. Like I feel like Moxley won in Chicago as a long con to get this match at Forbidden Door. If that's the long yeah. con, cool, it works. Show's Duh. over. Give him his damn give New Japan their damn world title back and stop hogging it. Like they need it for the G one. Like what the fuck? Yeah. When is the G one? I don't know the exact date. July twentieth. It starts. Wait, what was They're it again? What was G1 it again? The G one what? G one climax. Ooh, <laughs> Chavo. <laughs> just fuck you, you wait till the Anywho, let's <laughs> just you wait till the episode. Oh my I'm talking God. All right, G1. let's move. It's gonna be let's that. move yeah. on to a <laughs> really Interesting feud. There's a lot of girls kissing. Oh, talk about making... climax! <laughs> Ooh, Chavo. There's like, there's a lot of just interesting <laughs> things going on. You got timeless Tony Storm putting her AEW World <laughs> Title on the line against a uh, Stardom Champion and very attractive person, Mina uh, Shirakawa. Uh, the uh, uh, I think it's like the Star of Star Stardom Champion. If correct me if I'm wrong. Um, Mr. YLP, uh, but she's been on AEW TV for a couple of weeks now, kind of with Maria May a little bit, but Maria May, Mariah, Mariah, Mariah Maria, it's whatever. Um, the first by Mariah May, we do yeah, care. the the hot chick that doesn't wrestle. That's kind of a sidekick to Tony Storm. Oh, exactly. Yeah, that, that's Mariah May. Sure. Uh, so. Mariah's trying to choose, do I go with Mina? Do I go with Tony? The, only the AEW Women's World title is on the line, which makes me lean into the fact that Timeless Tony Storm is the most consistent, the most entertaining thing in AEW, and long may she reign. She's winning this whole thing. Uh, but for informative purposes, Mr. YLP, can you give me some information about Mina Shirakawa? Um, I'm, I'm just going to preface this, but I'm just a man. <laughs> I am merely just a man. <laughs> Not only is she quite attractive, she can go. Current reigning and defending, I just looked it up, are just a stardom champion, which is their trios okay. over in stardom. I have, I personally haven't seen much of her work, but I've heard it's damn good, and this is going to be a fun one. I think... I'm calling this one, honestly, my Dark Horse match of the night because of the story that we have going into it and Mariah May in the middle. Tony Storm is not losing this belt, though. 
by any means, there's no way. The ring is too good, and the promos are freaking badass. I can't be mad at that. Going to be good. Going to be a solid match. Tony Storm. Yes. Uh, Slack. Tony Storm. Yes. Thoughts. Love it. Love everything about the gimmick. Um, I think it is one of the best things going in AEW. It's one of the things keeping them afloat. Um, <laughs> that said. Let's hear it. Let's hear it. There's a button. Let it out. You've waited 18 is, months for this slack. It's it's getting a little stale. Okay. And the only reason I say that is because her big catchphrase is tits out, chin 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 up, chin up tits, tits out, out, watch for the shoe, and watch for the tits shoe. Out, and, and when she first and shoe. when she first started doing that, pop, the crowd would do it, and it was really over. I watched the promo for the contract signing that they did. She did it. Barely any reaction at all. So it's getting to a point where her character needs just a little extra kick in the ass to like keep the momentum going. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So it's well, is it was like, is, is it, let me ask you this. Is it more her performance or is it the fact that she has no one good to left to work with? That is where my next, point was. like how, like how's, how's it, how's the division as a you whole? Be, Cause you like, if, you only as good as your dancing. Part. Because my next point was, I think the thing that Tony storm needs for this character is to lose that belt. Mm. However, I don't think Mina Shirakawa is the one to do it. Especially if she's a rental. To, the one that has to do it, and I think people would agree with me, it has to be the one that she took it from in the first place. Jamie Hayter has to be the one to beat Tony Storm. Because Tony Storm has beaten everybody else, and she only beat uh, Jamie Hayter because Jamie Hayter was injured. If mm. Jamie comes back and takes that belt from her, that's that reset that the timeless Tony Storm's character needs, I think. That said, she absolutely retains at Forbidden Door. Fair one, enough. One thousand percent. Fair enough. I did have fan, <laughs> however, I think it makes sense. However, oh, part dang. of me does think that Mariah May does choose Mina Shirakawa, but Tony still wins. Ah, so she kind of goes a little bit lone without uh without Mariah May. It could be interesting. I mean, I don't think Tony Storm's character needs Mariah May right now. I really don't think she does. Tony doesn't need a sidekick. There's her. more focus on Mariah May right now than there is Tony Storm. And I think that might actually yes. be Tony's that could actually be the other alternative if Jamie Hayter is still not cleared. Mm. Mariah May beating Tony Storm for the women's championship sets up a better story, I think. Has Mariah as even gotten the ring love, yet? As much yes. as I love Jamie Hayter, I think Mariah May beating Tony Storm would be a really great story that they could run with for months. Has Mariah even gotten the ring? Is she a face or a heel? Who? Uh Tony Storm. Tweener, I would say. Tweener? Yeah. It's hard. It's hard to like supposed to be yeah. supposed to be a heel, but got loved so much. Yeah, exactly. So it's it's hard wait, to change character when you're a tweener, wait, though. Wait. That's what I'm saying. Is that that's what she needs? Yeah. True. Wait, I'm trying to think if Mariah May's in the Owen Hart tournament. Oh yeah, that's a is thing. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, because if she's in the tournament and wins, she gets the title shot against Storm. Mm. There's your opening right there. Yeah, more, more, more incentive for Tony Storm to retain here, and I think Will's on board with that with Tony Storm retaining as well. Especially since I believe, like yeah. I said, Mina yeah. Shirakawa is on a rental because she's coming from Stardom and still has one of their belts. Mm -hmm. um, and since the title's on the line, it kind of foretells that Tony's not dropping this to somebody coming from Stardom. It would kind of be weird. Uh, be with as Moving mm -hmm. on. To what I to what I call bias, all inclusive in this, probably going to be a show sale. Should be in the middle of the card, and we are guaranteed a title change one way or another. Mercedes Monet, formerly known as Sasha Banks, don't you roll your eyes at me, Slack for TBS champion. I will, I will fight you on this show. I will fight you on this show. The Boston segment was bad. <laughs> I will fight you on this show. Uh -huh. There's one word you can't say. <laughs> I can't whip out all reliable. <laughs> <laughs> no. So, um, going up never. against. I would never. 
going up to the, the current NJPW Strong Women's Champion, Stephanie Vaquer, title for title on the line. Now, if we remember, Mercedes Monet dropped the New Japan Strong Women's title because due to injury. Before that, Mercedes and Stephanie had several matches um, in New Japan, and I blinked the Women's Strong division, and from what I've seen, they were really good. They Their styles mess well together. Stephanie Vacare is one of the hottest people not signed in WWE, gender notwithstanding. She is on a tear. She holds a title in like three different, she literally holds like a world title in like three different continents. Okay, it's kind of absurd at the moment how how she is right now. Uh, she's shown up on on Dynamite. Mercedes Monet showed up in Mexico uh, just recently. I think last week. This is a pretty hot feud. Everybody knows where I'm going to stand with this. I'm always going to go with Mercedes. Uh, she has been trying to hunt for this NJPW title. Listen. I, everybody knows what it is. Um, <laughs> she's been trying to get this title. I think this is the time, but she does it. I like again, like I said, it would be surprising to me that somebody that is not fully fully signed to AEW, like Stephanie Baker, is not that we know of currently would take an AEW title on the road. That's not what AEW does. AEW takes other people's world titles and puts it on their show for several. Months. Look what happened to TNA slash Impact. Look yep. what's going on to New Japan right now. Yeah, <laughs> teenagers is like, wow, WWE mm -hmm. just does this way better. <laughs> That's crazy. You know, so with that being said, that is my that is my stuff on Mercedes. I think she's going to win just for that logic aside, and of course my personal fanboy bias. But um, Mr. YLP, before we get to Slack, because he is he is he is he is priming for. Don't worry, about for I, I got I got I got the button ready. <laughs> <Got the> <laughs> You know which one. I, I think so. Okay. Oh, okay. That one. Yeah. Yeah. Mr. YLP. What else do we need to know about Stephanie Vacan? Um, pretty much what you said is like I've just like heard about her recently personally. Yeah. Found out she has three belts. Kind of a big fucking deal, especially with the NJP Strong Women's Championship. But let's just forget Willow Nightingale versus Mercedes Monet when she when Monet injured right. her ankle. As far as I know, Monet was supposed to win that. Injury notwithstanding and all that good shit. It's Monet's to lose. She's taking this championship. And I've kind of been waiting on NJPW Strong to give her this belt. Perfect time to do it. Just just, just put that damn belt on her and let her rock. Yeah, unfinished business, I think, because of the injury. And then she showed up in AEW. Pretty much. So, we'll see what happens to that. Slack, what are your thoughts on this matchup? I had to give it to you. <laughs> no, I won't. I won't. Well, let, I won't. let the man I cook. Won't. Let the man cook. I will talk about this match, but then I will talk about my own personal feelings towards Mercedes Monet. Mm -hmm. This match will be a good match for sure, because as much as I hate to admit it, Mercedes Monet doesn't know the meaning of the word bad match. Um, I can't remember the last match that I saw of hers, whether it was under the Sasha Banks manicure or Mercedes Monet. That was bad. So She's got a point. her winning is really the only outcome because like you guys have already said, AEW doesn't let other companies take their championships. It has to be the other way around because they're the they're the other cable TV show. Right? <laughs> the so, other cable TV show. <laughs> well Impact that, has a show on Thursdays. That that <laughs> TNA, said, my fault. That said. My personal opinion because a lot of a lot of this like a lot of what I talk about is mainly just my personal opinions about certain wrestlers. Mercedes Monet could break me in half with like a fucking flick of a wrist, which is fine. It's facts. But my problem with her and her fan, her fans are actually probably worse than she is when it comes to buying into the bullshit. You hear, you hear that, Reggie? I'm listen, not, I am not listen, all listen, of you listen, specific. Not not me, specifically, not listen. me and her were good there friends is, at Comic Con. I made the Instagram story, god damn it. There's that's a fine. Very, that's fine. There is a very fine uh, group that's the fact though of Sasha Bank fans, Mercedes Monet fans, that are very much like Bianca Belair fans, very much like Liv Morgan fans, that it's like Wait, 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 hold on. Time, time, time out. Slack, you're a massive Liv Morgan fan. I am. 
Okay. <laughs> that said, okay. but that but that said, I am very much aware of the fact every fan base has its toxicity, and that's what my main point is. Is that a lot of my personal grievances towards Mercedes Monet Sa- Sasha Banks comes from the fandom. That mm-hmm. said, though, Sasha Banks came into the main roster of WWE at a time where that main roster's main focus was fucking Nikki Bella. Right? So the bar the bar is the quality bar is on the floor at that point. So you could put on a ten minute match and still be the best women's wrestler on the roster. (laughs) Wait, 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 wait. Yes, it's exactly the one I thought about. <laughs> are you are you telling me that Sasha Banks is only good because everyone else was so bad? Is that the no. point you're trying to make? No, thank God, because no. that would be the most false thing. I was in it. I was trying to say Sasha Banks is the tallest kid in kindergarten. Like, no. What I'm saying is that her stock went up as high as it did because she was so good at a time where everything was so shit. NXT TakeOver so Brooklyn so so take won the most we're watched just, match in NXT point, history. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We're for at sure. a point I've in watched women times. in Western... Re- re- Tongue tire. Come on. Let's get it together. Wrestling. Come on. Take a deep breath. Western women's, women's wrestling. Wrestling. Yeah. We're at a point in time now where the Nikki Bella, Brie Bella types of female wrestlers are a dying breed. Until because, Chelsea Green wins money in the bank. So, meaning untalented so in terms of in people's and mercedes monet has gone on record and said this that she thinks that she is the greatest women's wrestler of all time yeah get the fuck out of here i don't buy it. that for even i can make an argument second. it depends and, like, well d- here's the thing Sly, it, depends, at, I wish you it depends how you define wrestling I'm, uh, this, what this I is actually what i will now. say is that we did bret hart scale this once i remember we did we did bret hart scale her yeah what i will say is that at a she time, came out of number two i think at a time where wwe really needed women to step up sasha banks was one of those women and she absolutely at a time was the best women's wrestler on the planet for sure for sure, her her run where even as much as people hated the hot potatoing between her and Charlotte, every match was a banger. It was and, robbery of the year. But we're at a it was, point but now. But Sasha, Sasha Banks yeah. never had a successful. Well, no, she did until twenty twenty. She never had a, she never had a successful title. My, I think she always this, lost to Charlotte. I'll make this my last yeah. point because I feel like this yep. might get me a lot of flack from people. Ooh. Sasha Banks has been the same wrestler with the same. She's wrestled the same for the last eight years. You know how long The Rock's been doing the people's elbow? Uh, uh, no, Shawn Michaels. Sa- Shawn Michaels I know. Too. I understand Shawn that, I'm talking about match. a lot because of how much women's wrestling is changing. It's crazy to say it like this, but Sasha Banks, to me, Sasha Banks feels like she's still, or Mercedes Monet still feels to me like she's still stuck in the past. Like she's still trying to prove a point. Hmm. I don't know. If, like I think, I think after eight years, the industry finally caught up. That doesn't her? mean she fell behind. It means everyone else caught up. But yeah. that's what I mean. Is we're at a point I, I, now where I everyone's she's, she's everyone's on at par her level with to oh, yes. she doesn't stand out as special anymore. She's not. That's she's, fair. She's that's as fair, good yeah, as fair. there okay. are five women yeah. on WWE's main roster and on AEW's roster that are at the exact same level, if not above the level of Mercedes Monet. Like you, you can make a difference. There's really not much of a difference between Sasha Banks and like a Tiffany Stratton. No. Mm. Yeah. Oh, oh, we'll we have some. We'll, t- well, we'll skip no, that one. Okay. I do enjoy Tiffany Stratton Tiffy as time. a wrestler. I think she's great. Tiffany, great character, solid in ring, better on the mic. Like, yeah. I just think that Sasha, that Mercedes Monet doesn't have that shine that she used to because she's not as one in a million. Well, it's because she, she, she didn't go back to WWE. That's just that's why. Yeah. Because she chose well, AEW. No, I'm not even saying yeah. that. Like about I'm not when I say shine. I'm not even talking about like her stock. I'm just saying like when you watch her wrestle, it doesn't feel like this 
mega event, event anymore. It just feels right, like but, so, but, but WWE can limitation. help put that shine on. That is, that's on the that's on the company and it's not on the performer. Exactly. Like like look, look at Cody. Cody is literally doing the exact same character as he did in AEW. And we except love now he's it. The title belt. <laughs> and we fucking hated it in AEW. Ooh. But WWE put the put the right shine on, did the yeah. right marketing, and we fucking ate it up. And stopped them from bleeding. They made it look and stopped them and, from I, and I don't know. I really want to know how yeah. they did it because <laughs> that is how you make a billion dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. They just they just manipulate you through television. But it's AW fucking treating, amazing. AEW treating the Mercedes Monet signing like the signing of like staying in CM Punk to me was like so fucking ridiculous. They were that's like, a, that's oh, an AEW problem. They treat every I know. signing. Is that every every going. signing every signing and every breaking news is a big deal. It's like it's like oh my god, like it's, it's, we, it's, we, it's we have though. one of the hottest indie talents coming onto TV, and it's fucking Leo Rush. <laughs> right? It's like. <laughs> it's like y'all, y'all, y'all I mean, said. Yeah, they, they, over, they over, they over, they over, they overplayed their hands. Dude, yeah, the it's uh, fucking project. It's very WCW in its prime. Anywho, uh, it's, yes. it's show don't, it's 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 tell don't. Show. I mean, keep in mind she came in at the same time as Osprey and like a O'Connor. week. They're like weeks apart from each other. That's the other thing is that AW. Yeah, like they did the Adam Cole Danielson thing, Baby. and everyone loved it, and they were like, "Hey, what if we did that all the time?" <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, but it doesn't work anymore because everyone that show everyone expected it to be Danielson. So when it's cold, the reaction is like, "Oh my god!" And then when it's Danielson too, it's like, "Oh my god!" But then it's like, "Oh hey, AW's been in the talks: Mercedes Monet, Will Osprey, and Okada." And by the way, they're all coming within a month of each other. <laughs> Yeah, they, they they jumped the shark with their surprise stuff, so it's yeah. lost its shine. Uh, this anyway. should have been, this should have been Okada's special. first match for AEW. Like, should have been this card, in my personal opinion. Uh, yeah, no, they they o- Okada had been there for a while, so when he showed up, we're like, oh, okay, Okada's here a little bit more permanently. Yay, great. Anyway. Does no one else find it so... Last point, I, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Does no one else find... Is it weird to anybody else, and Mr. YLP can probably feel as weird as I am about this, how fucking weird is it to see Okada on on weekly television? Very. It is the weirdest feeling because he doesn't, and again, he doesn't feel as special as he used to. Because when Okada would show up, it'd be like, oh my god, it's fucking Okada. Like, he's here. Like, there's no way. And now it's just like, it's Wednesday and Okada's here. Because he, yeah, he got he got exposed. Nasty. He got a little exposed. I mean, if the clothes if the clothesline didn't how, expose him, this is how weird it feels. He is so funny though. He is, bro. This is how. Go ahead. Yeah, like, like this is how weird it feels. Yeah. Okada and AEW on weekly television is as weird as when the first time we saw Okada rocking pants. <laughs> <in New Japan. laughs> it didn't feel right. That's I'm fair. serious. Like, like I fully, like, I I fully agree. Man's wrestled in shorts the entire time I saw Okada, like since like 2016. All of a sudden, Man's is wearing trunks. pants and shit. And I'm, yeah, like what the? Like, I'm like, huh? It, it doesn't feel right. It doesn't make no. sense. So to see Okada in AEW feels weird as hell. Yeah, it's like it when Ricochet weird. went from like, pants no. to tights in like 2022. It's like, what are you doing? Like, it's just. He's funny as hell though. Like he's a he's a comedy wrestler stuck in the in stuck in the body of the world's best wrestler cuz bitches is so fucking funny. It has no right to be as funny as It's it because is. of the accent. But <laughs> everything comical about Okada's that finish over clothesline. No comment. Anywho, um no comment. Rainmaker's one of the best moves. It's so. a clothesline. JBL does it better. Anywho, uh <laughs> JBL does do it. JBL does a lot. Oh, he does. Yes, he does. Dude, uh, would, would you want to take a JBL clothesline? I don't think I'll so. I'll take a Rainmaker all day. I wouldn't take. No, you I mean, take a Okada's, I, Okada's, I'd Okada's survive. JBL's, I have brain damage. <laughs> Having seen Okada live, the dude is huge in person. So like that so rain made JBL, like hell. Beefy. Yeah. <laughs> JBL is also hitting you with anger and vengeance. Yeah. Okada's just wrestling. <laughs> Yeah, JBL. Okada's gonna bow before and after he hits you. JBL's gonna JBL, hit you twice. JBL's hitting you with the entire power. And you're still of the NRA gonna be in pain. Yeah, after. JBL's hitting you with a little bit of like a pinch of Jim Crow in there as well. Like that. That's how <laughs> JBL right hits arms, you. Like, like... <laughs> that's how JBL hits you. JBL would hit me harder because I'm Italian, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just on principle. Yeah. yeah, that that's the JBL thing for you. But well, I need a final answer. You going with Mercedes? You going with uh, Miss? Care. 
No, I'm going to go with Mercedes as well. She's a WWE guy. Of course she wins. <laughs> yeah, again, and also the theory of you don't spend so much money on Mercedes and just have her lose at one of your premier events. Wouldn't it be yeah, funny, same, same with Okada. Absolutely. Like, I hear, I hear Okada's on weekly television. I'm like, yeah, he fucking better be. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. oh, no shit. <laughs> yeah. Yes. So let's move on here. To, we're, in the, we're, in, we're almost halfway done. But we have the, uh, the Owen Hart quarterfinal matchup. Quarterfinal matchup. Owen Hart... Uh, foundation tournament because that's the thing with those really really weird belts and hopefully martha hart does not show up and make this <laughs> make this five hour pay-per-view a seven hour one <laughs> yeah. Please i can't believe tony was like take all the time you need no, thinking she was gonna be like all right 45 seconds no, tony, don't do it <laughs> this is a no, quarter final no, matchup and no, this is this is the no. daniel bryan dream match tour that he's been on ever since he showed up in aew um, I mean, good for him, yeah. man. Let him do what he wants. I yeah, mad. Brian Danson, Brian Danson versus again NJPW Stallworth, and just he hits hard. Shingo Takagi. <laughs> so, Mister Wildpie, can you give me a little bit more on Mister Shingo Takagi? <laughs> Tails is gonna fucking die. That's <laughs> Shingo Takagi, a, a, a personal favorite of mine in New Japan, former. Never open weight champion lost to Hanare uh, recently, but this dude kicks your ass. This man went undefeated in best of super juniors. This man does not look like a junior, but NGPW decided, yeah, let's do, let's make this beefy motherfucker. He looks you know, like somebody run. senior. <laughs> yeah, lost to Will Osprey in the final, which was crazy in, in my eyes, but. This is just a Danielson retirement tour, and this is one hell of a stop. Takagi's a beast, and he hits you like like you literally beat the hell out of his grandmother for no reason. <laughs> oh no, there was a reason. They won't tell you. <laughs> Takagi will never tell you this. This man, like, since he's joined New Japan, he's just been amazing. And for Danielson to just be like, "Yeah, I want Takagi," you're in for a long, long, long night. You're in for a long night. Takagi's been up with the best of them. Okada, freaky <laughs> Ishii. Evil. Uh, I believe he faced uh, Murder Grandpa Monoro Suzuki, and that was just fun. It's, it, Danielson's gonna have the time of his life in this match against Takagi. I, I mean, yeah. I just want to know. I'm going with Danielson. As crazy as I'm going with Danielson, as crazy as that sounds, because it just makes sense in my mind. But man, Takagi's gonna put on. A yeah, show. I'm not going with Danielson it's because be fun, honestly. Brian Danielson really tests out his neck and concussion protocol every time he gets in that ring. And whoever his doctor was, He's going to and whoever this. his doctor was, I need to find him because apparently that man works miracles because Brian Danielson is still wrestling and still, like, he almost lost an eye to Okada last year. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and he's still wrestling. <laughs> Whoever the doctors that Brian Danielson saw need to be given a raise, and I want to be one of their patients for whenever things go bad for me, because apparently they work miracles. Yep. Brian Danielson's going to get his... Takagi's yeah. going to beat that man. It's, He's, He's going to be a slaughter. This is what Gunther should have done to Sammy, which he almost did at, at WrestleMania. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, totally, I see Brian Danielson as the guy who's like, he he's... Brian Danielson's the guy that's too into pro wrestling that's also a pro wrestler. <laughs> yeah, I, th I, think it's, yeah. I think it's my turn to say something controversial. He's that fan that's like, I could fucking do that. Yeah. Dude, Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson just fucking hates his family. Here's my question. Here's my question. Yeah. Yeah. Who Brian. hates their family? Then Moxley Who hates their too. family more? Brian Apparently. Danielson or Seth Rollins? Oh, dude, oh, dude, that's really close. Oh, shit. No, 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 We're bringing that no, no, topic no, no, no. up? Okay, Brian hold Danielson on. Brian Danielson hates his family. Seth just hates his wife. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a fair point. Like, that's a fair point. You know what I mean? Point. Like, he, he loves being home alone with the daughter. Because once she came back, he was like, nope. <laughs> <laughs> Time to get back on the road. <laughs> I am enjoying it. I'll be right time. back. Hold on. Seth Rollins is like, I can finally jerk off in the hotel again. <laughs> <laughs> Seth Rollins said he was going to the store and never came back. 
for real. Seth is like, Seth's like, I'm going to take gonna the be daughter. A, that's going to be a fight. Seth is offering to take the daughter just to give Becky more, just to give Becky more alone time so he can just be away. So I'm for guessing real. you're going with Brian Danielson there, Will Terrence. No, I'm going to go with the other guy. Shingo Takagi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brian Danielson just Not a bad Brian, choice. The other half of Brian Danielson's is like, I just want to wrestle everyone. Is he? He loves losing. Yeah, he's like, hit me, hit me harder. I wanted to go he's to like, Japan. I am this. the underdog who never wins. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Takagi's gonna build everything he wants in there. It's like, like, I want to be able to still. I still want to be able to play with my daughter, but I want you to keep me like real close to being not able to. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the Brian Danielson. Lore right there just loves to take a takes a lick and keeps on taking. Uh, yeah, dude. T K just goes, Daniel Bryan. I got good news and better news for you. The good news is you're going up against Shingo Takagi. The bad news, the better news is you're going to lose. And he just goes, <laughs> Ooh, Chavo. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's for real. Yeah. Oh, man. Shingo Takagi's beating Brian Danielson. Brian Danielson will still like bow to him at the end of the match for some reason because that's what Brian Danielson would do. He's going to bow on yeah. one leg. Yes. <laughs> The MJF Homecoming Show. You MJF. Whoa. MJF is. I never gave my opinion on that. Unfortunately, it, yeah, it, it, it does We know matter. what's going to happen. <laughs> but yes, like, if you must. If you must. Like. I was just going to say that Brian Danielson's trying too hard to make you forget that he's Daniel Bryan, and it works. That's true. It does it work. Does work. It, it does it work. work. It, it works. It's, it's the tour of hey, it does it, work. You could have had in WWE, but you didn't. Yeah. Shingo, Shingo Takaji will will kick you so hard that it will change your eye color. <laughs> so like, Brian Danielson wow. Wow. <laughs> wow, what a yeah, you what will a skip bar. a birthday. <laughs> you will skip a birthday with how hard that man kicks you. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's move on to MJF. Uh, giving a match because it's on Long Island. MJF lives like 15, 20 minutes away. <laughs> or grew up fifteen twenty minutes away from here. MJF. This will probably open the show because it's MJF. Uh, MJF is going to go up against. Uh, I believe it's. Hechicero, if I say that correctly, um, from CMLL, if I remember, if I if I'm actually correct with that. Uh, so this is a true. This is actual forbidden doors about somebody from another company versus somebody for from another company. There is no titles on the line. This is an all star game type event. Fun. Comment Slack. We're gonna let you go first on this. Yes. Um. Okay. I have feelings about MJ. We all do. Person. We all do. I we all I'll do. get the button I ready. Think MJF is oh shit. People talk about how MJF is like the modern day CM Punk. Like he's the you know he's he's the guy on the stick. Mm-hmm. Like like sorry, not that he's the modern day CM Punk. The first comparison that people make about MJF is immediately to CM Punk. Yes, because he's all he's all business, no bullshit in his promos. You believe every word that comes out of his Active mouth. School did good for him. Sidebar that has nothing. Sidebar that has nothing to do with this. I love MJF. Side I Berg. love CM Punk. I'll let it slide. Side sidebar. Side whatever. Sideberg. Side this is the show, Slack Sideberg. We've been doing this for years. Okay, fine. I still think Eddie Kingston is the best in the business on the market. Yes, mic. he is. That's just, yes, he is. That's just that's just a quick yeah. point I want to make. <laughs> but however, that that said, the main compare, like I said, the main comparison to MJF is CM Punk, and right, and it makes sense for me. I see more of Chris Jericho in MJF. They are both really douchey for one reason for for one reason and one reason only, and that is adaptability. Because MJF mm. has seamlessly made a transition from the most hated heel in all of wrestling to one of the most beloved faces, and it was seamless, and it was beautifully done, and it never once felt forced. And all it took was and for him to Garrett... dress up like Triple H coming back at the garden for it to work. <laughs> but that's my point. Is that is so that... funny <laughs> with someone like Jared, like someone like Jericho. Jericho reinvents himself and then eventually he gets to a point where he hits where he is now and we'll get to that when we get to the Jericho Oh, no, match. we're not getting to the Jericho match. It's not on there. Oh, then fuck Chris Jericho. There you go. All That's all we then. need to know. Continue. And, <laughs> but I, I don't... I'm at a point where I was actually getting sick of MJF and then I'm back fully on board with him. I'm just wondering how... Like, I... I mm, I like the idea that they're going with an Osprey feud for him after this, but I feel like it's going to cause the momentum of his rivalry with Cole Bebe. to slow down to a point that no one's going to care by the time we actually get that. I didn't that care match. about it when he returned. 
I was like, oh yeah, they had okay. a thing. <laughs> yeah. And you're also a Mercedes Monet fan, so you're a Liv Morgan fan. How does it yeah, feel about man. Dom's taking your spot? <laughs> I good for him. I don't know, man. Good for him. She's doing pretty well on her own. <laughs> <laughs> she is. She is. Uh, I, I I don't mind giving her more TV time. Who needs to get cut? Oh got, no! Oh no! Like Dragon. I got a beautiful cut? fuck. <laughs> I got a beautiful blonde girl in love with me in real life anyway, so I'm fine with that. I mean, Dom can have her. I got my own blonde girl. Yeah, but it's not Liv Morgan. Liv Morgan gets people nuggets. I saw Raw last night. Liv Morgan works at Hooters, all right? She knows she has skills. She does have skills. <laughs> she she, she, she does have skills. Facts. Facts. <laughs> she will be a rupee in record time. That's <laughs> true. That's true. Hooters waitresses are good. I still can't. I still they're that, fucking, that they're whole, incredible, dude. <laughs> that whole storyline is just insane. Like they earn their tips. Like, they do. They do. <laughs> like the, the wings are good, though. I will admit, the wings are good. The wings are the wings good. Are the good. Wings That's are what fine. everybody forgets. Like the, hoodest, the wings the are good. Wings? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, for it's like doing, yeah, like they're better than strip club wings. Yeah. I mean, let's be real. It's called Space Space. Yeah. <laughs> did you see? Did you see the video of her after she like retained her title and she did and she did the the, um, the hug. How many times did you watch did that? So a lot, that a lot, times. a lot. <laughs> yeah. I have it as a notification. Yep, yep I knew it. I knew it. I'm bad. Anyway. <laughs> I like that. I like that. You know, but anyway, before we move on to this, a couple of things. Uh, Mr. Wapi, what do you know about Hachisero? Absolutely fucking good. Dude, he looks like a gay Aquaman villain. <laughs> this, I, I, this actually, is, this is actually, a fucking point. <laughs> like, look at him. Like, as I said he looks on the YLP podcast, uh, he, this is literally a glorified home yeah. game. Nothing more, nothing less. MJF wins. We cheer. Yep. We keep it fucking. Pretty much. Yep. Pretty That's much. It. All right, real quick. I was today years old when I found out that MJF took his tagline from Dodgeball. I'm better than you. Oh, yeah, dude, come on. You didn't know that? I'm better than you and yes, I know I, it. it. It makes sense. I didn't know he took it from Globo Gym. Yeah, which we're better than you. And we know it. We know it. We and I know it. For a point of mention, yeah. um, Hedgesero was rated number 35 in the top 500 uh, PWI in 2022. 2022. He is a... Though. He is a three-time champion in, um, in Mexico across different promotions. Mm. And he's also a former WWA independent wrestling champion. So the guy's got some history. He does have sure. some history. And I doubt AEW is going to play him up to his prestige because it's going to be the MGF homecoming show. Nope. Which exactly. is the sad, which is the little, sad oh. thing about this Forbidden Door. You need to be playing up these people. Oh, my God. Hechicero means wizard in Spanish. And Ray Hechicero, which is his other name, means wizard king. And the fact that we are not getting the Wizard King versus MJF is now really I want Ray Hedgesero versus Ray Mysterio. King Mystery versus Wizard King. That writes yes. itself. Oh <laughs> right. Absolutely. It sounds so good. <laughs> but it's so entertaining. I'd right watch month, it. Baby. I'd watch it so bad. And it in right under the, right, right under the deadline. Oh, my God. Yeah. On the same, I mean, Forbidden Door is going Next. on the same day as Pride Parade, too, in New York City. It was like, oh, it's going to be a wild turnover that oh yeah this match i am really not looking forward to because this match can either go one of one ways it's going to be really slow zach saber jr who is a snail when it comes to wrestling pace versus yeah, that's just another <laughs> word for boring dude he's fucking boring technically I remember him at technically brilliant no, it was evolved it was our first evolved show technically uh, bro- it was evolved he was also one that like the cruiserweight tournament or something he was yeah zach saber jr he was Te- technically brilliant, ZSJ. Technically brilliant. Technically speaking. Mm-hmm. Just technically so, boring. Just really, <laughs> just really a snore to watch sometimes. You're really not into that style of wrestling. And Orange Cassidy is Orange Cassidy because he 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 does. Orange Cassidy is what Orange Cassidy is. I have no idea how this match is going to go. <laughs> you know what Zack Saber Jr. is? He's really really good at the worst part of wrestling. <laughs> yeah. It's like you're you're good at you're really good at chain wrestling. Oh, oh wow! <laughs> so fill an arena, why don't you? Like, come on, dude. Really he's nice guy, though. Time, really nice guy. It's a quick time event in real life. 
a real time event, in real video time. games, whatever yeah. it is. Quick time. Yeah, so like I don't know where this is going. Orange Cassidy is kind of those things who I like Slack I said with other people, it's kind of lost its luster after a while. Oh, I got some, I got some, you I know, got some. so I don't know who takes this. I really don't care who takes this right now. But just to shake things up, because I feel like Will's gonna go with Orange Cassidy, I'm gonna go with Zack Saber Jr. I'm going with Zack Saber Jr. Damn it, Sorry. Will. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I do you, you bury him just to lift him back up. What can I tell you? It's like it's a catch twenty two. You don't know what you're gonna you never know. <laughs> Black, you have some comments on on this match. I have a few comments, but I'll make them quick, which is faster than Zach. I'll, I'll make them faster than Zach. We got one more match, match to go, so that's fine. Okay, I'll take a bit. Don't of do time. that. No, Just keep 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 the pace okay. you wanted to do. <laughs> <laughs> I have to edit this. Remember, first off, first off, first off, Zach Saber Jr. is the human equivalent of Ambien. <laughs> um, <laughs> That that's that's the starting that's the starting point. Um, wow, <laughs> fucking wow. Orange and for me, Orange Cassidy is like. So I have a very weird relationship with Orange Cassidy. I didn't like him at first, and then I watched his match with Pac, and I was like, oh, okay, I get that, I get this, and this is fucking great. But it gets to a point where, like, the the I'm too cool for this seventh grader gimmick gets to a point where he does that because seventh grader. <laughs> where there was a point, like, I, and I know I keep saying this, but a lot of people, and like, it's just because wrestling can get really stale really fucking fast, mm-hmm. like yeah. really fast. And with a gimmick like Orange Cassidy's. It's something that you can only do so much with. And because, again, it's an over gimmick, but it's not a versatile gimmick. You can only do guy that doesn't care is really good when he cares so many times. And I feel like there was a missed opportunity, and that feels like the fucking tagline for AEW. is like just AEW missed opportunities. It's next pay per view. Yeah, <laughs> next pay per view. Exactly. <laughs> it's like every match on the card is like is like shuffled out of order. It's like, oh, we had Orange Cassidy it's, it's versus people Tempera, who lost, and now it's Temperetta versus like Julia Hart. But the thing is, is that they had a really good opportunity to make Orange Cassidy really interesting again, and they didn't take it because when he lost that, what is it, the All Atlantic Championship? I think it's the international title now or something. I don't yeah. remember. The, the, the intercontinental, yeah. intercontinental title. continental title. I'm just gonna call. I'm just gonna call it the intercontinental. It's easier. When he lost the intercontinental <laughs> championship, it like devastated him, and like he became, he just did like he doesn't care, but he really didn't care after he lost that belt. And then he got it back, and everything was fine again. And then he lost it again, and it was like whatever. But there was a time in there where it was like. What if they turned Orn Cassidy heel because he's so focused on getting that belt back that he cares too much and now he's like hurting people that like he shouldn't be hurting? Because Trent Beretta being the one that broke out the best friends was kind of silly. I feel like it should have been Orange Cassidy when he was trying to get that All Atlantic title back. And I think it would have been funny also because you can still make Orange Cassidy be the I don't care guy, but as a heel. Because all you gotta do is just make him wear black denim instead of blue denim, Absolutely. and that would work perfectly. Orange Cassidy as a heel. Yeah, what would work? And putting him oh, with Saber like Jr. Tony Delvecchio just... version of Orange Cassidy. <laughs> yeah. Yes, dude. Good putting luck, someone yeah. Orange Cassidy with someone like Zack Saber Jr. does not. It feels like a match that was specifically made to make people talk about it on Twitter, <laughs> and like. Because it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense. If it was something like when he did, when there was Pac versus Cassie, it made enough sense because Cassie can wrestle a Pac style match. No one can wrestle a Zack Sabre Jr. style match because Zack Sabre Jr. is just Zack Sabre Jr. His opponent's asleep by the time he gets to the ring. <laughs> so, I, I don't know. It's just, I don't give a fuck about this match, even in the slightest. So, if I had to pick somebody, I guess Zack Sabre Jr. via Don Callis family shenanigans. 
Because I don't think he wins clean. I think Trent Beretta gets involved somehow. Don Callis family. Kenny Omega's former faction. You know, when Kenny was wrestling. Yeah. Jesus. Now is Zack Sabre Jr.'s in it? Okay. No, 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 no. Zack's not in it. Trent is, and Trent's feuding with Orange Cassidy. So I feel like Trent's going to cost Cassidy the match somehow. Before we move on, uh, Mr. YLP, do you have any comments about uh, Orange Cassidy, the man who can't do a who tried to steal Roman Reigns' as finisher and failed, uh, Vert <laughs> and Zack Sabre Jr. Hey, I, got, I got no pun with the Orange Punch, dude. <laughs> orange Punch is funny as hell. I'll give him that. That's funny as hell. Orange Punch is great funny move. as hell. Yeah, like he, he looks great doing it, too. <laughs> yes. I'll give, him, I'll give him that. He has, like, no airtime just... on that jump. <laughs> That's what makes it great, though. He's Orange Cassie. I'm just mediocre at everything. <laughs> like, anyway, Mr. Wild P, floor is yours. What do you got, up, what do you got on this match, if anything? This this just Bert, this match itself. When I'm like looking at the card and making predictions or whatever, this is the why the fuck are we here? This is where I go get a shit ton of food. Piss break. <laughs> this should be this will be second on the card totally. after uh, MJF gets his hometown you know glory oh, and, main event. and no one will care. With that being said, Zack Sabre Jr. wins and also uh, fuck Chris Jericho and the Learning Tree, whatever the fuck that is. It's a straight up indictment on fucking everything that Brian Keith shouldn't be involved in. <laughs> There you go. Oh yeah, Brian Keith is a part yeah. of that. Sorry about that. All right, one more match. It's the uh, the match Slag is most looking forward to, and one that AEW doesn't actually have a card thing for. But the TNT Championship. That's a thing, folks. There's another title, the TNT title. Remember, yeah, that, remember belt? that belt? Remember bang. that was a secondary belt, and it's not anymore. Bang so hard. TNT. I can't wait to the off TNT. And the TNT <laughs> belt. Yeah. This is match of the night. This is, this is match of the you, night. You I don't shut care your whore mouth, Slack. Anywho, um, the TNT. Match of the night. Jesus Christ. The TNT. Dude, they, they gave the network a title belt, and they still can't get a TV the deal. Network. They gave them two. They gave them two. <laughs> why can't they just be like, like, why can't they just rename the fucking belt? I, I don't know. I don't know. Anywho. They they've been doing qualifying. Anyway, let's stop the people. They've been doing match. qualifying matches for this championship, for this TNT championship ladder match. Very money in the bank ish. Uh, but the winner gets the vacant TNT championship. Because remember, Edge was Edge and injured himself because Edge is old and injured himself in a match. <laughs> old man from Toronto. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Dumbass. They break down. Yeah, Edge, Edge forgot that he shouldn't be taking top. Taking dives off of the top of a steel cage against Alistair Black. Why should Even not Brian Danielson's like, you usually pay double for yeah. that cotton. So, so yeah. T- that's two TNT titles. Yeah. So, the TNT Championship uh, ladder match participants that we know of thus far: uh, Dante Martin, the the Dang. ROH champion, Mark Briscoe. Remember when ROH was a thing? <laughs> Remember when Tony? Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> There's like, no oh, shame wait, here. This shit it's just is me. Fucking yeah. useless. Yeah, they're they they're, they're on honor club or whatever. Um Oh god. Anywho, um so okay, now we have was it that's not okay. No, it's uh Kenosuke Tedesco is gonna be this. Jack Perry, because he used to be a pillar of AEW, and the surprise, surprise Remember what out happened? of retirement for the umpteenth time, Leo Rush. Has returned to participate in this title match and someone else to be named for the vacant TNT championship. I'm going to go on record right now. Uh, it, at this point, fucking give it to Jack Perry. I don't know. Do something. I don't see anybody else who's formidable and no one in ROH affiliation is going to win the TNT title. I'm just saying that right now. Uh, but I'm gonna, it's even going to be Takeshka. Uh, or, or Jack Perry. I don't even care who the vacant person is, who that might be, but I'm going to go with Jack Perry Fish. Turn Buckle Wow, Turn the Brooklyn Brawler. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Slack, you are very, yeah, right. you are very excited for this. What are your thoughts on this TNT Championship ladder match? First off, I think the, again, I don't know if he's injured or not, because I feel like I feel like if he wasn't injured, he would be on TV. But I feel like I feel like Kushida would be a good fit for this final spot. Um, so I'm hoping it's Kushida. I hope it's that I hope it's just somebody from NJPW. It has to be like it has to be somebody. Um, that said, I'm I'm very underwhelmed by who's actually in the match. For a You're underwhelmed. A little bit. I'm still very excited for the match. I still think this this has potentially be match of the night. But my problem with it is 
Leo Rush, and I hate to say it because some people might not like this, Mark Briscoe. No, I, 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 I'm fine with that. I don't, I don't, like, it's, okay, I have, I have to really word this. I know where you're going with I, this, and I can't wait for this. Let's hear it, Slack. No. Oh, so I can't wait to say Slack doesn't like, does no, not I'm, like No, it's not that, it's not that, it's not that. <laughs> he's been, he's been no, it's someone else with Mark Briscoe. No, I know and, I'm, and I'm, and like, this is like me being oh, serious as are, are, I can be. Are you going to be like, there's, it's the pity win because his brother died? It's not necessarily the pity win, it's just like. Pity push? Essentially, yeah, and like I don't like saying that because Mark Briscoe is good, but he was only good as a tag wrestler. He's passable as a singles wrestler. You know what I mean? So it's like he didn't. He made the transition to singles wrestler kind of because he, because he had to, and that's not anything against you know him to to continue to be on TV the week after. Not even a week after it happened. Absolute respect to Mark Briscoe forever for that. But it's just he doesn't fit the style of the match either. That's the other thing. Is that I feel like he's just in there to like be like you know how every ladder match has like that one guy that's like out of he's like out of the loop. You know what I mean? Like it doesn't make sense that yeah. he's there. Yeah. He's just there for that reason. But this felt like a really good opportunity again. For someone like Isaiah, Ca- like Isaiah, Ca- uh, Ca- uh, the guy from Private Party, Isaiah Ca- Cassidy, I think is his oh, name, yeah, right? Private Party was a thing. I forgot yeah. about them. Yeah, this could have been a great yeah. match for him to. Well, that you was know, a Max Caster and the other guy, Anthony Bones. Anthony Bones, yeah. Um, I just feel like this could have. Yeah. I feel like it could have been more interesting if they put someone like, honestly, and it could still happen because there is an opening spot. I think Juice Robinson would have been fucking fantastic to have. Oh, the juice match. is I loose, think... baby. He would have been so yeah. fun <laughs> to have in this match. And why Leo Rush is in this match, I don't fucking understand. I like, didn't know Leo Rush was I still wrestling. I, I assume he's just there to be the alternative weapon when a ladder isn't available. Um, Spot monkey. But basically, but you also have Dante Martin there already. And Dante Martin is better than Leo Rush in every aspect. Except for Mike work, because Dante Martin, I don't think I've ever actually heard him speak. Point is, I don't think Jack... I think it'd be funny as hell if Jack Perry didn't win this match. Because it would just make him look like that black sheep that they already, like, kind of playing him up to be. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? So I think it would just be really funny if, like, anybody but Jack Perry won this. Because then the Bucks could, like, really run with it, I think. And, like, make that person defend their belt, like, week after week after week after week, and then eventually give Jack a match that he then wins the title for. Having, having defended on TNT, he'll, he'll go undefeated. Yeah, I... Because the thing is, is, like, I feel like AEW... I feel like AEW ties their own hands sometimes because they give people the belts for so long that they want them to, like, have lengthy title runs, but it gets to a point where it's, like... Well, who's believable to win at this point? Like, to win that belt. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, Tony Storm's been women's champion for, I think, almost a year now. And it's getting to a point where it's like, who's left? And if Jamie Hayter still isn't healthy, who's next? You know what I mean? So, I think I think to get more longevity out of this title, I think someone like... I feel like Takeshka should win, personally. Because then I feel like that could then lead to to Takeshka versus Osprey too. Potentially, I mean, who knows, Mister Wild P? What are your thoughts on this TNT Championship ladder match? I mean, to me personally, this is just Takeshka, Perry, and a bunch of lads. We just yep. like hand picked out of a damn hat <laughs> for this TNT Championship. Throw a darts out, Nothing out. else matters but these two. I want to see. Uh, Elite shenanigans. I want to see Don Callis family shenanigans. Yep. I want to see nothing else. Personally, can we just have Takeshita versus Perry and just let the other five, you know, just get a paycheck and you know, just chill out and, and catering and whatnot? I'll take that over whatever they're about to do with this. Nathan Lumberjack. I'm going with Perry in the end because why the hell not? But it wouldn't be bad, in my opinion, to see a Takeshita Perry rivalry for some reason. A little bit of a feud over the TNT Championship and just have elite shenanigans and Don Callis family shenanigans in that for a couple of months. Let's just do that. I'll, I'll, let's just I'll do all of that, take the other five out of here, or however many, and Leo Rush's 900th 
you know, retirement coming out of whatever the hell. Just Perry wins, but hopefully I get it to catch the rivalry out of it because shenanigans. Yeah. Well, Tara Sock. I have a All quick right. question. Go ahead, Slack. Did they announce a blood and guts match between the elite and like as a set of teams, or did I is is that not? I have not true? heard anything yet. All the focus I know has been on Forbidden Door. Okay, because I could have sworn that the elite set up a match recently. That was like maybe I'm thinking of the because they just did Anarchy in the Arena at the last pay per view, right? I don't remember. There's been a lot of pay per views in a very short amount of time, Slack. Like, does yeah. Mr. YLP remember? Yep. That's the thing. That's probably what I'm thinking of anyway. But mm-hmm. Takashka for TNT champion. There you go. Will Tarashok. Pick some pick pick a wrestler out of bat. Who do you got here? Oh, Br- Briscoe retains. Briscoe retains. <laughs> Briscoe retains. <laughs> because why not? Uh, I'll, 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 I'll say this though about the final spot. Can MJF pull a double? Oh, fuck yeah. MJF does not need the TNT championship. For the memes, bro. For the fucking Wait a minute, wait a minute. I have a prediction. Yeah. Go. Sammy Guevara is the last spot. That would just be too fucking funny. It it, it (laughs) will be. Guevara's ready because... Uh, uh, (laughs) He's been posting. He's been posting that. He's been teasing. I think think he's next. I think because I would pop for that. he is tied to that fucking belt like Darby Allen is. And because Darby's not available, would Darby be available? Hmm. I mean, he's like, let me I rethink mean, that. Is he doing Ooh, this, is, this is up Darby's shit. alley. Like, he almost died crossing the street, so I'll give Darby a ladder match. You know what? That's very. Yeah. If Maybe Darby's almost, healthy, it has to be Darby. Going through glass. If Darby's healthy, it has to be him. But who is. That'd be or, cool. Or it could be. um. What's his name? Um, Brian Cage. <laughs> no, that no that that lost Why not? that lost child that Christian runs around with. Nick Wayne. Um, <laughs> Lucha yeah, Wayne. Wayne. Yeah, Nick Wayne. <laughs> that would yeah, be, oh, be funny as hell. And that would like be... every time, like he goes to client because it would just be like the Nick Wayne murder show. <laughs> because like he would like be like that shit house that like only gets in the ring like when there's like no one there. And every time he tries to set up a ladder, he just gets killed. And then like there's like another five minutes, and then he tries again, and he just gets killed again. And and then maybe he wins, and Christian makes him give him the belt. Oh yeah. And that could start. I was about to say that. Yeah. Shit. What if he just wanted to give it to Christian? I'm like, uh, that could happen. That could happen as well. So okay. Nick Wayne's mom wins. <laughs> Wouldn't be Wayne's out of the realm mom. of possibility for AEW. But anyway, folks, that is. She does a James nope. Ellsworth and unclips the belt for Nick Wayne, and then drops it to That's him. That's the best booking you've ever done, Slack. Um, so AEW, Thank- that is the AEW wow. Forbidden Door card again, Sunday, June thirtieth, uh, from Long Absolutely Island, New York. Uh, no, not it's only the official matches I saw on AEW.com, and there's only eight so far. Like I said, Dynamite is next is tomorrow because we're recording on a Tuesday. Uh, it. Jericho, everything. No one gives a damn about Jericho anymore. Anywho, no, to not. watch, to watch AW Forbidden Door, AWS posted that you can watch it on Bleach Report, cable, or satellite if you still have that. Apparently, Dave and Buster's Nationwide will be showing Forbidden yes. Door. I've done this. <laughs> no, I've what? done That's this. Cool. You know. I've done I got this. one about a half hour from where I'm at. Trilla TV. Go. I got a story about Dave and Buster. Apparently, you could purchase it on YouTube, BitTorrents, and Fretzelmania in the chat, pay-per-view.com, because apparently that's a URL. Uh, and the Zen, which is also a partnership as well. I do know previously some theater, some theaters have shown wrestling pay-per-views in their movie theaters. Like, I think they did WrestleMania. They've done AEW shows before. So you can... I saw Mania at the air. What, this year's Mania? Um, no, WrestleMania 32? Whichever one was Triple H Roman. Oh, that was 32. The yeah, shit one. I saw that, and I I, I wanted my money back. But moving <laughs> Were you the only one in the theater for it, or? No, my buddy dragged me to it, and it was filled. Oh, shit. Yeah, it was crazy. It was a Maybe lot I'll of Maybe I'll do fun, Marks but... in the Movie Theater one time along that. That'd be interesting to do. Um. Uh... I watched WrestleMania 39 or 38 night two at a day in Busters, and that was a lot of fun until I heard a grown man scream bullshit at the top of his lungs when Cody lost. <laughs> 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 swear to God. Swear to God. In a room filled with like him and his children, the three count comes down, and there's just silence. You just hear, 
fucking bullshit. And like, he's like, <laughs> still real. It is man, still real to him, and, ladies oh, and gentlemen. Oh yeah, he was so mad. <laughs> That's amazing. Uh, they rented out a whole room and everything. Oh, fantastic. Uh, be it as it may, folks, yeah. it is wow. now time to crown this event this potentially massive event for AEW with our crown system one to ten crowns one being uh the worst thing that you've ever seen ten being the greatest show of all time we're gonna go to our guest room go to mr ylp how well do you think this forbidden door pay-per-view on long island get that straight folks will be six and a half crowns oh okay not not too high, not too low either. Just a little bit above average. Something about some... I mean, it's going to be the undercard that's going to be carrying this. I mean, yeah, you got your big matches, but something tells me it's going to... Like, like look at Forbidden Door last year and compared to this year. Yeah. Last year's card was so insane, man. Being there live was just... That's the, and that's the point. Like, this card has good matches, but also... Yeah. It's Black Saber Jr. and Lawrence Cassidy. <laughs> It'd be lacking. Cool? Maybe. Who knows? Slack, what do you got for me? As I sit here looking at the match card, I very much agree with Mr. YLP. But on the other side of the scale is that the main card like the main matches that they're hyping up is what's going to be this be the thing that saves this card that said five and a half wow wow because i think Damn. because i think you know what no i'll i'll six and a half i'll agree with mr ylp for different reasons though i think that the problem is is that the quality of matches is not where it should be or could be. And it feels like the only way I can put this is that it feels like this card was put together because it had to be. Mm. Yep. The first two Absolutely. The first two Forbidden Doors, but for, even for me, especially last year's Forbidden Door, feel felt special. Mm. Like it was just like, oh my god! Like we're getting Osprey Omega, we're getting Okada Danielson, we're getting Punk and Kojima, right? Kojima. And like even some of the other matches I can't think of off the top of my head, like the friggin' ten man tag was stupid fun. And now this year it's just kind of to me it feels like, well, it's Forbidden Door season, and we got we got to have a fucking card, right? So. I feel like the undercard is going to really underperform. I feel like there could be a couple of like little sneaky bangers in there, but I don't think we're going to be talking about this card in a month's time. Interesting. Will Tower Shock. That's a damn. What are you game giving too. this? Absolutely. Um, I'll give it six. I'm not going to watch it. So who gives a shit? <laughs> yes. Here, here, here's. Here's the thing. I'm actually going to be the optimist one and give it a seven. I think it's going to be above average, so so it's going to be slightly above six and a half, but a seven. But nothing to really, I think, take home. But here's my take on the problem with the Forbidden Door pay per view as it is. There's nothing forbidden anymore about Forbidden Door. The first two Forbidden no. Doors were great because you never saw Okada, you never saw Takeshka, you never saw Osprey. But guess what? AEW bought them out. They bought all the surprises that you could have, and now you see them every day, and so now you have nobody to surprise them with. That is the issue with AEW partnering with New Japan as it was in the first place. Okada showed up on TV all the time on AEW TV before they fully signed them. There's no surprise that Okada was coming over. There's nothing big there. Anything that would have been big coming out of New Japan has been shown in AEW outside of Forbidden Door season. There's nothing special about this. To make this special, you have to limit the exposure of all of these outside towns. But AEW wants to play in the sandbox with everybody, except for TNA and WWE, that they bring in all these people that you kind of already see them, you overexpose them, the luster is gone from all of these outside towns. It's either they show up and you don't know who they are, or they show up too much and you know too much about them. There is no aura behind Forbidden Door. They took Forbidden Door, they jumped the shark with them, they burned the door to the ground. <laughs> I think the, th pro the problem that AEW has with Forbidden Door is a problem that WWE still kind of has, 
but had as a major problem through the 2010s and the early 2020s, and that's themed pay-per-views. Because matches like TLC, Hell in a Cell didn't feel special anymore because it was just yeah. like it, it wasn't it was like a gimmick. It wasn't like, oh my god, like these two guys hate each other and like it has to happen in hell to sell. Lives will change forever. Like bodies will be broken. And now it's just like, well it's fucking October. <laughs> like, <laughs> <so>. <laughs> so, like blood's coming back. With with for with Forbidden Door, it's like Ricky said, it's that it doesn't ha it like I said before, with like Sasha ba- Mercedes Monet not having the shine on her anymore, Forbidden Door doesn't have that shine anymore. It's just, it's it's just the AEW NGPW crossover show. That's all it is. It's, it's cross- it'll it'll, it's it'll be better. It would almost be better if Forbidden Door wasn't a pay per view but like a match type. Ooh. Yeah, like it's 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 a Forbidden Door match coming up at yeah. All In. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, I could see that. That would be more. And you do it, and you do it sporadically, and or like every, or every pay per view has one forbidden door match yeah. or something. Because I think the the other problem that there is with forbidden door is that, except for Osprey, after last year's forbidden door, it was just like okay, well that happened. Like forbidden door, here here's a good comparison. Forbidden door to me is AEW Survivor Series. Yeah. Where everything is put on hold because this pay per view is coming up. So in WWE, you could have like the blood feud of the year going on with, between like two guys, but nope, it's Brave Warfare season. Now we got to wear the same t shirts, right? So now Thank it's God like for war games. With, yeah, right. Yeah. Now, now, yeah, because they made that change with war games, but now even war games is getting that watered down feeling because now it's a it's a show. But yeah, I think what Will said it would be a really good idea is to do like a couple of forbidden door matches on a card rather than because you get to a point where it's like you just don't really care. Like I'm kind of like, yeah, the show's coming up, but like cool. Like it's not gonna matter in a week's Over-exposure time. Overexposure didn't make it forbidden anymore. The only yeah. match that's going to have okay. any like, ramifications after this pay-per-view is the main event. Everything else after that mm. has no validity after yep. this week. And the main event's not even a forbidden door match. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And it, it, people it, are like... Now think of it on the New Japan side. Think of it on the New Japan side. Oh, they, they have I, no benefits here. Yeah, and going back into uh, when I was here with, with you know, the squadron, you know, as we talk, went into Wrestle Kingdom, talking about the main event, Naito and Sonata, I even said, and I remember this vividly, Sonata. Sonata, they they made the Sonata the guy, but they we know for a fact he is not the guy. No. Naito took the championship, and then all of a fucking sudden we just gave it to Moxley, which was a weird flex, but okay. Um, <laughs> because New Japan is in a period where they've lost Okada, they've lost Osprey, and if you want to add, you know, Mercedes Monet in the mix, you know, with yeah, the, you know, there's no one left. Strong sort of things. They lost a, a hefty they amount of people. WWE and Okada WWE was WWE their <laughs> god. Like, Okada was their top dude, and now he's in AEW. It, <coughs> Forbidden Door, to me, doesn't feel special, knowing that New Japan is now going to, is a, literally in a restarting phase. Yeah. Everything, at least to me, from what I'm seeing personally, starts at G1, and we go from there to Wrestle Kingdom 19. If G1 is, is, fi- is as fire as I think it's going to be, and I'll be talking about that on the podcast on for Saturday. Cheap plug. This is gonna be a this is gonna be a big freaking deal for New Japan, like to try to figure that shit out. Because AEW took everything. Tanahashi as president now has to and has made a 10 point plan to rebuild New Japan. Again, it sucks that AEW did is there you know, Okada's and Ospreys and all that are AEW. But like you know Slack said, there is no benefit for New Japan in all of this. No. It doesn't feel special. Forbidden Door does not feel as special to me as it as it did the past couple of years. And it just hurts New Japan and it hurts my heart as a New Japan dude to see that. And now I have to see New Japan restart kind of all Which over. Which is a shame for the second right. most for historically one of the second most it's powerful a- companies in all of pro wrestling. New Japan Absolutely. right now is in is in a spot that WWE found themselves in when WCW was signing all mm-hmm. their guys. And yep. and the problem the problem that New Japan is going to run into, and like Mr. YLP said, and it's a, it's a 
fucking shame. The problem is is that New Japan is in that exact same position. The problem is the lack of exposure. So yep. it wouldn't totally it it sucks to say this and like you guys might disagree with me, but I think this is where we're going. New Japan Pro Wrestling doesn't exist in five years. Wow. I really don't think it does. <sighs> and either either it does <sighs> either but either look. Maybe not five years, but I feel like New New Japan is going to hit a point in the next couple of years. I don't know the exact time frame because no one fucking knows the exact time frame of this. But that slack, period, because they they don't they don't have anyone huge eating up all their salary. Cap. But that's what I'm getting at, though, is that the the problem that New Japan is going to run into is the same problem that Impact ran into money. in yeah, like money. 2013 yeah. to like I'd say like 2019. No one gives a fuck. Whether it's your diehard... Like, there were TNA diehards that weren't watching TNA. There were times in WWE where I went months without watching WWE. I was a diehard fan, but I got... I was just bored. I didn't care anymore. And it's the problem, like you also gotta add, a, you gotta, you gotta add a few more words to the end of that sentence. No one gives a fuck in America. That's my <laughs> point. And that's, I mean, it's, it's like, exactly. the, but that's so it's, the problem. It's, it's say, that, they might be out of business in America, but to say they're going to be out of business altogether, I mean, we have no idea how together, big they I'm are. In they're pretty huge. Or, or I should say, you no, know, Japan, Japan. Mm-hmm. When I said New Japan, the country. comparison <laughs> I was trying to make, though, was back to Impact, <laughs> where Impact was essentially a WWE feeding system, where it was, it was like... Yeah. It we was have like, these was, guys like, that... Like, like, NXT or NXT. We have these guys here that make... Two hundred fifty thousand dollars a year doing wrestling for Impact, whereas WWE is like, we'll give you a million, and you don't even have to wrestle every week, and they just hate the guys. And I feel like New Japan is going to start having that problem because it's already starting, because they've lost Osprey, they've lost Mercedes, they've lost uh, Takeshka, they basically lost Takeshka. They've lost. They're in a, they're in a rebuilding yeah. phase. You know, the problem is, is that they don't have phase. that Western exposure that they need to be able to actually rebuild in that phase. So there's a chance the New Japan is stuck in a rebuilding rut way longer than they should be because of the lack of Western exposure. And Forbidden Door is not doing them any fucking Yeah, favors. I think they were hoping. Yeah, yeah, th- Western fans will look at these not. guys that are coming in to wrestle AEW guys and go, why should I care? They just lost. Like they like this dude yeah. guy's ass beat by MJF in ten minutes flat. Why should I care about this guy? And then they won't. So, check so the if problem. I'm if I'm New Japan, what I do is like I tell TK, listen, this Forbidden Door thing is over. Give me three years to build up new stars that are huge in Japan. They come over. You then get some of my audience. You put them over to draw in the American audience. Yeah. yeah. Like that's, that's what that's TNA is doing that, with WWE right now. Yep, exactly, exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and if, if you're Tony Khan, Japan, if you're if you're Tony Khan, right. it's like, well, I don't, I, time, I, boys. I don't have the t- ability to share my audience right now. I fucking need my audience to stay here <laughs> because <laughs> my audience yeah. is shrinking. So it's like this forbidden door yeah. thing. They're kind of relying on the New Japan fans to come over, but New Japan's kind of relying on the same thing. But there's not enough fans to there share. Isn't. Between the two of them, it's the same fans. You pass from the and same. That, and that's the, and that's exactly. the crazy part about New Japan. That's like, a really good. American that's a good way to put it. Being yeah, that's a that's a solid way of putting it. Like Tanahashi needs to rebuild New Japan. Absolutely. I don't know how long it's going to take. I'm not sure like who they're going to build up. You have established talent in New Japan, but there's also a lot of talent that you have to build up. Yeah. Yeah. Like like look at, like, like the, looking look, at look, that. Go ahead. No, like looking at their stables, like like looking at Bullet Club. Uh, I was Bullet just Club about to say the same thing. Like I was Bullet just about to bring up. Oh, you mean the thing the elite let's, ruins? Let's let facts be facts. David no. Finley as the leader of Bullet Club does not move me an we- inch. Not even fucking. I forgot close. they were still a thing with Gato there. Like, yeah. And, yeah, but and, at, this, at the same time, Mr. Like at, at, the same, at the same time, Mr. YLP, you see Joe Hendry on NXT, you're like, oh, shit, he okay. He off a show. <laughs> oh, don't tell me. But <laughs> you, at the time, you know what I mean? was like, oh, shit, when I saw it on, on Twitter. Like, that's the thing. Like, with the stables that they have in New Japan, all the factions that they have, none of them move me. Just Five Guys does not move just me. Just Five Guys. LIJ is probably the only faction we got in New Japan yeah. that moves me because they got some hella good talent 
within that stable. Bullet Club don't move me no more. Chaos doesn't move me no more, especially since Okada left, who was yeah. the leader of Chaos before he beast out. United Empire, I can rock with it because it actually mm. works out. Other than that, they need to build and build fast. I mean, Slap isn't wrong in saying, I wouldn't say they'd be gone in five years, but yeah, they'll be I, damn I, I damn reworded reworded in about three if they do not get this shit together. Like, like I don't care what anyone says. I mean, as the somewhat resident NJPW expert here in, in the rest of the right. radio, like, I want New Japan to be the shit. I have all, I will die on that hill, and I've died on that hill since 2016. Tanahashi, and I'm saying this as as a hardcore New Japan fan, get it the fuck together. Yeah, I mean, the, the, there's a lot we can talk. And it starts with, it starts with G1. It starts with G1. Yes. Wait, did the G1 the G1 what? Climax. The G1 Climax tournament. Ooh, hey, hey. Goodness. With that being said, folks, I might need that. I might, I might need that for my O to G1. Will I'm just letting I'll, you know. I'll, I'll, I'll send yeah, you the audio file. It's like a half my a God. Second. With that being said, folks, <laughs> that man. does conclude our show this week. Want a big thanks to Mr. YLP and YLP only for coming on the show. Slack, you did good too. Um, <laughs> yeah, actually, your TikTok stuff, so you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, you did. You got TikTok. That's gonna be a fun time to do those. I'm gonna be released for uh, probably a lot this weekend if I get to it. Uh, That's a that being said, we're at the end of the show. Obviously, <laughs> we're going to give our guests some time to speak on some things, plug their stuff if they care to do so. And we're going to start with Mr. Slack. Hey, guys, I got to do the music. Uh, I mean, we can't. We're not going to do that. Take it Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Yeah, uh, no, we're, okay, my okay, outro okay. will do the music for that one. You can just. Follow me on Twitter. That's where I'm mostly active when it comes to That's wrestling. True. That's Slack Style Zero Nine, as you can see there. Um, yeah, just if you want more opinions that will probably piss off a lot of people because it's funny, follow my account. Like, <laughs> yeah, I got I got nothing. Else. It's good. I just it's I good. Just, I just enjoy pissing people off on Twitter because I just say things that everyone else is thinking. Yo, also shout out to Slack. Every now and then he. Posts a really funny meme on Facebook that makes me laugh. Yeah. <laughs> so I, there was I, one yesterday. My, my, one share, yesterday got me. my share funny. game on it, Facebook is unmatched. It is. It's excellent. Like six times out of ten, it's really funny. Good percentage. Good percentage. Mr. Buddy W. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. YLP, plug your stuff if you may, sir. How, do, how, how the fuck do I follow that? Anyway, y'all can find me pretty much on Twitter, X, whatever you heathens call it nowadays, at YLP perspective while perspective over on instagram at young underscore lines underscore perspective and on tiktok yes i have a tiktok it's a thing apparently you can watch funny memes on uh, hilarious at wild perspective i've also i'm the host as it says there as a royal fact i am the host of the ylp podcast every single damn saturday kicking off your weekend in proper wild p fag shit you know I can't wait. I mean, I'm going to have fun with the Forbidden Door premium predictions, and then I got to do Money in the Bank premium predictions, the early yes. version, because I'm a glutton for punishment. So that's that's going to be absolutely hilarious. I already have my at least my women's Money in the Bank winner. I don't have the men's. I'm just confused at this mm-hmm. point as, as in terms of men's Money in, uh, money in the Bank. It's just going to be a time. But, you know, catch that this Saturday. Episode 396 on the road to 400. And can I plug the uh, 400, Ricky? Go right ahead. Mind? Please. All right. So, yeah, um, 400th episode, July 20th, 2024, coinciding with the six-year anniversary of the YLP podcast. I don't know how I did it. Math apparently just came together, and we were just like, here you go. Let's have a baby. Uh, yeah, it's going to be a time. I'm going to do the O to the G1 Climax. Uh, we'll can hit it if he likes. Yeah, where just, is it? You know. There it is. Ooh, <laughs> there yeah, um, we're going to be doing, I mean, I don't know what we're going to do for 400. Uh, anybody, uh, for my forbidden door is open, pause. Um, anyone, is in, everyone's invited of war, squadron, join me in the 400th, July 20th, four weeks away, four weeks away. It's like a pay-per-view, but, you know, audio version. And yeah, yeah all, all, everyone's invited. Yeah, you already know what the vibes. It's going to be a good time. And I, I mean, just think about it, it's crazy. Yeah, dude, like, we did 300, and that was wild, and now it's 400, and I'm like, damn, I'm old. Yes, you are. Like, it, was a, it took a year and a half to get to 400, but we are going to do it. And it's uh, okay. Oh, Will, K, Ricky, Slack, you can come to, I fucking guess. Um, <laughs> everyone's invited. 
to the 400. Everyone's invited for, for to the 400. So we'll, yeah, we'll yeah, figure we'll, that out. We'll talk about it at, at some point if you need some assistance. We'll speak that. on yeah. that. Off stream. Off stream. Yeah, off-stream. We, we can, I can figure out some <laughs> ideas for that or what have you. Uh, be it as it may. Yeah, I think that's yeah. it. Uh, Will Tarshock, if you may, sir. Oh, there we go. That's my there. Cue. That's your cue. Uh, okay. There it is. There we go. There we go. Back on track. I told you it was going to be a pretty mega huge show in two hours in, folks. We have reached the end of Kings of the Rings podcast, episode number 381, the prohibited portal that we busted wide open with some hot takes from Slack and some education from the Far East with Mr. YLP of the Young Alliance Respected Podcast. I have been your host, King Ricky Rose. You can find me at Ambassador Biggs across all social media outlets, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. So Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, uh, Twitter, some people's DMs, less people's text messages, B-I-G-Z, Ambassador Biggs. I saw that face well. Find Kings yep. of the Rings Podcast at K-O-T-R underscore podcast across all social media outlets. Like, share, subscribe. The links to all of our stuff are in the description below. If you are listening to us, make sure you are listening to us on Wrestle Addict Radio, the Q for the Common Wrestling Podcast, home to the Young Lions Respected Podcast, the Fretzelmania Podcast, the Brace for Impact TNA Podcast, and of course, Kings of the Rings Podcast right here. The links to all of, uh, the links to all of our network stuff are in the description below. Will Tarashock. Oh, hell yeah. What a show. Big thank you again to Mr. YLP and Slack. Slack, hell of a, hell of a show tonight, man. I got to give you Man, I gotta give game. you a no. Man, I gotta give you. A, I gotta give you a standing. I wouldn't no. stand. I would not stand. I, I'm standing. I'm not, I'm not standing. standing. I'm not standing. Thank you. These, I am these standing. hot takes are fucking incredible. I could I, I didn't know you had it in you. It was a lot of fun. I'm proud of you. You're a <laughs> podcaster. Who'd have thought? <laughs> you ain't gonna forget me again. Probably. You're absolutely correct. No, that was just very memorable. I can't tell half. Kay all about it. Kay's gonna listen to this whole thing. Oh, I hope she. I hope they watch. I hope they oh, watch. Oh yeah. Oh no, they definitely will. Anything else to plug, Will? No. No. All right, cool. Yeah, when we come back next week, it is going to be one of our seminal shows of the year. It is Money for the Marks. I don't know what number it's on, but it's Money for the Marks. Oh, gonna... shit, it is. It's yeah. 10. It's yeah. 10. Is it Money for the Marks, 10? It's 10. It's your 10th. No, 9. It's your 9th year. It's my 8th year. Damn. It's my 8th year. year. Yeah, 8th year. Yeah, Money for the Marks 8 or something like that. Yeah, 10, Jesus. Um, Yeah, it's Money for the Marks 8. I might bring some ringside club people, and I've been thinking about that uh, today, so I might have to get contact with Mr. A.O. Baker and Chad Law to see if they want to be on the show to help us predict that, so maybe another oh, make yeah. a show in the works. Uh, but until next week, folks, enjoy Forbidden Door. Again, thank you, Mr. YLP and YLP only. Maybe you slack sometime in the future uh, for coming on the show. So without further ado, we will see you guys later, and stay stick around if you want to stick, stick for the poster for a little bit, because, well, we do have some bonus questions to talk about. But until next week, folks, oh, shit, you're right. I totally okay. forgot. Yeah. Until next week, folks, good Bye. Good night. We will see you soon. And oh my god, I get to say it to your face. Fuck, <laughs> fuck you, Slack. Fuck Slack. <laughs> it was wasn't K. I'll see you next week. This has been a Wrestle Attic Radio branded podcast.